here we are episode four of the build stuff be kind podcast uh we have the opportunity and and blessing to have jenny commenda of now remind me is it juniper Mm -hmm. juniper print shop Mm -hmm. juniper studios what's the official name juniper well it's juniper studios the name of our okay of our corporation. Of all the yes. things. Yes. Juniper but, Studios. But Juniper Print Shop is the, is the big business. Yeah. Perfect. Juniper Print Shop, we're going to talk about the practical business skills that have helped you build the success <laughs> that you have and, and the ups and downs of building a business as well as the soft skills that have helped build the culture and community around what you've accomplished. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad to be here. We're it's going to be fun. We're yeah. pumped. It's going to be a good time. So let's start with um, let's start with some of your favorite brands, favorite brands oh. that inspire you that you feel it could be one, it could be a few, it could be something that is more recent or something that's like this has been my brand for years, but just something that like when you think about a brand that's doing it right, um, what comes to mind? Um, there. Are- that's a good question. I I am in this sort of season where I'm kind of keeping my head down a little mm. bit. Yeah. Which I think I feel like so much of business is like is almost like nature seasons, you totally. know, like like sometimes yeah. you're in a winter where you're just kind of like you're in and like yeah. you're just in your own stuff. Can't look and you let it Yeah, exactly. Exactly. But you know, spring comes and you yeah. pop up and you look around <laughs> and then summer totally. and you're hanging with everyone and it's yes. like, yeah, right. And totally. I think I think I think for most of my career, I was in spring, summer, mm. you know, and yeah, then yeah. and then we we got bigger in 2020. Mm. That was a really great year for us, and oh, that's yeah. really when, um, which was a great year for us financially, but yeah. not, you know, I mean, it was a rough year for for everyone. I yeah. think, you know, yeah. for other reasons, but um, we grew a lot in 2020, and so, um, you know, and that's as wonderful as it is challenging, mm-hmm. it was mo- very, very challenging. Totally. And so now we're kind of like, we're still sort of like, it's like recouping from yeah. that spike and figuring out how to sustain. Mm. And so I kind of, you know, we were in this sort of summer fall and then I, I've been in this like winter for maybe the last like year or so, just totally. sort of like really digging in deep and figuring out what our, what our company is, you yeah. know? Mm-hmm. So I have put my head down wrong, and you know, as I'm starting to like peak, peak up a little bit Mm -hmm. um it's interesting to and i hope we talk about this today just like how different social feels Mm. right now and what what needs how we need to show up totally as as brand representation or you know representatives of 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 our brands um and as in sort of like dabbling in that influence or like it's like what do what are people connecting with right now it's interesting and it's challenging too figuring it out from like the pure brand side you know, like I have like my own personal brand that talks a lot yeah. about design and, 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 you know, sort of some of these other broader sort of influencer elements. Um, but then there's the like content strategy for just our brand, you totally. know, and how are people connecting with just brand content and how can we make mm. interesting, you know, everyone obviously is putting a lot of emphasis on video yeah. and like, how can you make interesting videos that are connecting and have mm-hmm. a story and have a message and how ha- and are serving yeah but um but you know can people really actually connect with the brand this is a question that we're like grappling yeah. with in our marketing meetings like how can we like are we like messing with people by like <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. you know what i mean and 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 i think it, it's sort of the benefit of like having the like yeah. size company that we have is that is that i can still be woven into to that narrative and people a lot of our customers are connected with me as like a yeah as a designer and as a blogger and stuff. So I think totally. that that has been a, like sort of a helpful thing. I am weaving, yeah. I'm all over the place. Welcome to, no, no, no. <laughs> welcome to doing a podcast it. with me. No, yeah. I love it. Um, <laughs> because I mean, so many things that you said are, are so bad. So you're in a very unique position as, and we can kind of touch on, on, on your journey and your backstory from, you know, kind of working in, the design business, like mm-hmm. the business in New York in like the mm-hmm. core, but also, you know, very early on building your personal brand, your brand through blogging and content creation. And then mm-hmm. from there to like the rise of social and, and kind of riding that wave to now yeah. building product brand, yeah. like through that journey, I'm sure. And, and now being kind of this in this hybrid 
role yeah. as like the CEO and founder of a, a product company that's in your space, but uh -huh. also you have this like connection to community through who you are personally. Is that yeah. ever challenging? <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's cha never not yeah. challenging. <laughs> how how do, I guess how do you how do you juggle that? How yeah. do you, how do you balance the Jenny Commenda brand versus mm -hmm. the Juniper brand? Yeah, and like, um, and and how do you think about those? Because actually, mm -hmm. that's something I've been I'm working on building more of alongside this podcast and what mm -hmm. we're doing with Honey House, building my personal brand. Mm -hmm. Because there's just there's ways that. Jenny Commenda can show up yeah. in the world, speaking, uh, doing podcasts, doing things that like Juniper can't necessarily embody. And, yeah. and fortunately you have both, which I think is, is what business owners kind of have to do. People yeah. are connecting more with the people yeah. uh, in sure. business yeah. than, than the actual brand. And, and it's a hybrid. So yeah. I think you're in a really good spot, but, uh, how how do you feel like you navigate that and and manage that on a day to day? Do you think about them separately or do you try to weave them as close together? We're trying to weave right now. Mm. Do you, do you want the real story? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Let's get oh, real. Yeah. The realness. The real. Let's get the real. Real, real. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the tea. <laughs> um, so yes, I think that uh, up until maybe that 2020 time we the the story I, I launched the print shop in uh, 2017 and I had been blogging for almost um, 10 years before that and um, you know I think I think my first employee I hired maybe in 2014 2013 mm -hmm. or something like that and that was more on the design side and then in 2014 2015 I hired a team to sort of help with blogging we took on a lot of sponsorships we were flipping some houses mm -hmm. we were doing some stuff um, you know considering Doing HGTV, Trying lots HGTV. Of things. yes, totally. Yeah, we had a pillow line actually at mm. the time. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, So we were, you know, we were dabbling, trying to figure out are we going to do retail. There were just like yeah, a lot of goods, yes, right? for sure. Yeah, lots of and and also you know really quite busy with client work yeah, too, yeah. Um, which really is meant to be a full time job. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You can't really. So you had like seven full time jobs. Yeah, basically. really felt like that. Plus a family, you yeah, know. Yeah. And so I think that the easy, the easy yeah, stuff. Was, yeah. yeah, no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's tricky because we were, you know, there's just realities to how mm. I love to work. I'm a workaholic. I'll put it. I'll work harder than anyone else. But like. They're just yeah. like 24 hours in a day, you totally. know, and your health starts to take a backseat. And if you're not mm. healthy, then the company can't be healthy. And so anyway, you know, every, you know, you just go through the cyclicality, I yeah. think, with businesses. And then, you know, 2020, we started to ramp up really quickly. I was feeling burnout and just and just feeling like how just staring down the next year, feeling like, how can I manage you know, a t like we're, we're doubling in size, like yeah. every quarter or whatever, totally. like how do we, you know, new employees hiring, 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 you know. And, and at the time, weren't you building out a new office and warehouse? Yeah, we had and... just moved to like a 20,000 square foot warehouse <laughs> yeah. and we were just like literally hiring nonstop. And also Insane. a little bit of work, you know, you have a little bit of that scarcity oh, totally. in the back of your, it was like, is this just, Unknown. is this going to sustain? Yeah. And yeah. like, am I, you know, and you're like hiring these, like making these huge hires that feel like, I am like, I am like, I am feeding this family. Did, did and you what make if a, I can't keep feeding this family? Yeah, totally. You know? like, did you make scary. a dis deliberate decision because COVID obviously hit and, and direct consumer, it was kind of this moment because we, we were in a similar spot. It's either you lean in or you pull back. Did totally. you make a deliberate decision to just lean in? Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah. My husband, who's an attorney had a great job and he, we, decided to have him come on and so he, wow. yeah wow. it was great he quit his job in march of 2020 what <laughs> wow amazing scary timing yeah. but, but and and it's been great it's honestly cool. been really awesome yeah so back to some of the like questions yeah. about my brand versus versus the juniper brand we hired a creative director mm. that year and um it was a huge hire for us you know and i think that the goal was that i could sort of pass off some of the like leadership mm -hmm. vision of the print shop um, to someone else who I felt like I was really in line with, you know, yeah. um, so that I could really be sort of the brand ambassador, yeah. right? 
and mm. and because there are we have examples yep. of other bloggers who have started product lines that have people just run their product lines for them yeah mm. and it works great for them mm. you know um and so we thought let's let's try to do that and granted it was like a tricky time to do it but what what we found was that it just what it didn't work mm -hmm. didn't quite work yeah. and you know i think that when you have a a, a company, a product company that is such a pure extension. It was, it's so much overlap with totally. the design stuff, you know? Yeah. It, we just went off track yeah. quite a bit during the year. And, mm. um, and, uh, and about a year in, we just said like, Hey, we got to like course correct or whatever. Mm. And so I came back in and really have like dropped off on some of the personal brand mm. stuff, mm -hmm. which is okay because I mean, if we're just talking pure money, you know, totally. I mean, Juniper revenue is lapping what I could produce yeah. in, in influencer stuff, or, which you yeah. can make great money as yeah, an influencer. Yeah. Yeah. You're hustling though. Oh yeah. And your time is your money. Yes. And I make money while I sleep with print shop, yep. you know? Yeah, and so, totally. and I can take, we just took off for a whole month to go yeah. to Europe with our family and like didn't yeah, slack the business once. is still going. We were not, yeah, we were, it was still going and we have yeah. a great team. And like, that is like, that is the, the, the beauty. And, and I think for the season of my life at where I am in parenting, yeah, you kind of have to like, it's like, okay, what's right for the business? What's right for me personally? Am I building a business or a life? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Was that trip, did that trip feel different than other trips you've taken? Because your lifestyle and your life has been so much a curation of your experiences and maybe you're good at balancing this, even before that trip, but because, uh, so most of the trips during keep nature wild years, a lot of times, especially if it was like camping or going to a cabin. Mm -hmm. It was like, well, we can bring product with us because we're going to be in the outdoors and then it would turn into a, it's a work trip. Yeah. A work trip. <laughs> yeah. So, um, maybe that's something that you had already balanced, but, but since, you've leaned more into the brand, into Juniper. Um, what was that trip? Like? like, did it, was it different or, or was that something you'd already kind of figured out how to balance? No, before I, there, there's a lot of deconditioning. I, the, yeah. I mean, you, you, I think when you are a daily content producer for so long, yeah. you have this very weird, just like drive inside you of like, I have to be posting. I have to be posting. <laughs> yeah. I have to, if I'm not like, like how am I, it, did it even happen if I didn't post about it mm, kind yeah. of feeling and like, that's, you know, I think that it's that I don't want to assign like a value on that. Like that's totally. not a good or a bad thing. No, yeah. You know, I'm grateful. Different. Like I had to put that time yes. in to develop and grow the community that I grew, 100%. you know? Um, but you do almost have to like have like first thought, thought second thought, mm. you know? And the second thought is no, I'm here to like decompress with yeah. my family and like, here's where the boundary is. And so I did yeah. end up, I actually was posting quite a bit in the beginning. And then I had this thought of like, I just mm. need to be present right yeah. now and like really be here. And so I sort of like signed off a little bit and didn't even announce it or anything like that. And I don't yeah, think yeah. people need that anymore. Yeah, you you know? Know, like, hey, I'm taking it. It's like, yeah, look, who you, cares? Just, yeah. you get to decide. <laughs> you do, you. I, th yeah. I think yeah. we forget. Yes. And especially with an audience that you have and the community, it's like, you still get to decide. Totally. Like, I, yeah. I, you know, it's like people are like, oh, if I, if I build my personal brand, then I've got to talk about my kids and my family. It's yeah. like, no, you don't. Like yeah. you can still have boundaries and well, you can still set like everyone like, like throws around this like algorithm thing or yeah. whatever, where it's just like, if you don't post every single day and if you're not posting a real five times a week, like, yeah. or whatever, it's like, if you're posting authentic, good content, people 100%. are going to like, like you're going to have a high and engagement And if you're providing rate. value. If you're posting garbage stuff just to be posting stuff yes, every yeah. single day, you're going to have low then engagement. you're playing yes. the algorithm game yes. and, and it's like, that's a dumb game. I agree. It's a losing uh, game. I, I agree. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Go for it. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, I was because you, you mentioned at the beginning that like having a business is like seasons and sometimes mm -hmm. you're putting your head down and, you know, it's the opposite of spring and being out and involved. So I'm curious to know, because as small business owners, it sometimes it's just you doing it. Yeah, for sure. And if you put your head down and disappear, yeah. it's like the business dies. Absolutely. You know I mean? So it's what things do you feel like? that you have in place now uh -huh. that allows you to be able to go to Europe for a month yeah, and the business marches on. Yeah. You, ha I, I live and die by our numbers. Like mm. I am like all about, about 
about margins mm -hmm. and about like being really, really, really responsible about where, you know, how we're spending our money, cash flow stuff. Um, and I am careful about hires mm -hmm. and, um, I feel like we're finally a few years into this thing at a point where we really have like a solid team that I feel like I, I absolutely trust them. They know my brain enough. Mm. I think that's the thing that we don't really like, I think maybe it feels a little icky when you're like, I know I've read books, yeah. like startup books <laughs> that have said maybe the opposite of this, of that a founder's job is to like build something that like, you know, build a culture that's so clear mm. that, that, um, and maybe I'm saying the same thing actually, now that I'm saying it out loud, build a culture that's so clear that your, that your company can just run without you, totally. you know, or whatever. I, I, and that's true, but it's what I've learned is that it, for me maybe, and maybe it's different for different companies. And I'd love to hear your experience mm. with, with your, with your business, but it's such an extension of who I am as a person, not even my aesthetic, yeah. Lot, but but just my values as as mm -hmm. a human being that I that it's like it's almost like my employees just need to get to like a, we need to get to a personal enough relationship where they know how I'm going to what judgment calls I'm going to make about, mm. you know, returning this giant order of whatever, you know, like, yeah. yes, absolutely. Yeah. And we pay for shipping, you know, yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? And yeah. like they, they don't even need to check with me anymore because totally. they know Jenny's going to say this. Mm. And so they always say WWJD, which is. <laughs> <laughs> so at what, so like, good. at what point did you feel like, okay, you, you've started this business. At what point did you feel like I can start to hire people and look for the right people mm -hmm. to kind of come take over some of these things for me? I think like, it's about what? risk threshold. But for okay. me, I wanted to have a year of runway of where I had enough cash that I could like pay that employee for and myself uh -huh. for a whole year without making a dollar from that point on. And that then I felt like I could sleep at night and it wasn't like, Ugh, you know, I mean, mm. what was the statistic that came out in 2020 where it was like all the you know businesses were just shutting down like crazy because oh, everyone yeah. had like 14 days of cash flow or like, of like, of like you know, it's oh, like, yeah. like they were it's crazy. Yes. And so when things dried up or when they weren't having events or whatever, it just like, you know, and I get it that some that it's different for different totally. industries or whatever. But um, I I really like having a lot of cash on yeah. hand. Um, Who doesn't? Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think saving for a while, going yeah. without for a while, hustling. Yeah. You don't have the luxury of a winter. Yeah. When and there were many, many, many years that I was just showing up, yeah. no matter what was yeah. going on in my personal life, no matter how I felt that day, no matter what I'm like, what am I? Who? What is my brand? Like all mm. these things, like that's for the weekend. That's for like you know. And I think that's some some of the luxury of like sort of like you know having lots of energy, starting young, and just being yeah. able to just like work till three a.m. You yeah, know, totally. or whatever, and just like getting it done. Not that you can't start something when you're older or whatever, but I think the pace is going to be a little bit different, yeah, yeah. you know, and you have to like be wise about it. But, you know, I do think it's a luxury to be able to have those winter seasons where you can step away and really like rejuvenate and think about like what it is that you're doing, have that like vision mm -hmm. moment where I feel like so often as, as like a leader, yeah. when you're like actually like managing people while you're supposed to be the one having the vision, you really lose, you really lose the vision quickly. And yeah. you're just like, you're in the weeds about yeah. the technical stuff, you know, and I think you do have to kind of, if you, if you're managing a team of more than a couple of people, I think you do need those times away where you can really like zoom out, get above the trees. Yeah. And we're going the right way, you know, like, yeah. cause no one else is going to do it but you. Right. right? Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's, it's interesting because you started that, uh, answer with like knowing your numbers and your margins. And like, I think it shows just how you think about, kind of the freedom of the constraints that business. So like, you knowing your numbers, knowing your margins, know where you're at, know your cash flows, focus on that. I think that enables you to then shift and because you know all of that stuff is, is dialed at least for that snapshot of yeah. the business's life. It's like, okay, cool, mm -hmm. this is a comfortable, good place where we know now these numbers, we know yeah. what's coming in, mm -hmm. what's yeah. costing to go out. Mm -hmm. Now you can really focus on, okay, how do we maximize within that window? Which truly is, I think that it, it could, somebody could hear that and think, well, good for, good for you or whatever. It's just truly a matter of, are you patient enough yeah. oh, to get totally. there? 
Do you, yeah. Are you disciplined enough to say like, this is just like, yeah. we have to be smart about it, you know? And I think some people have like, you know, cashed out their 401k and thrown it all on the table and risked it all and, and, and done really well with it. And like, that's totally. awesome. Like good for them, you know? But I think when you're, when you have kids and you have a mortgage or whatever, yeah. like, I think that like, it's the like, go slow to go fast yeah. kind of thing. It's like, what are you trying to build? Are you trying to build a company that you're going to flip real quick? Or are you trying to build totally. a legacy company? You know? But you also had a decade plus of, of like the grind the grind yeah <laughs> you know of doing yeah. that where you yeah. could say look you know to to do this the way i want to do this like and and like be comfortable to really shit like reinvent yourself in in yeah. some ways like reinvent sure. your art process yeah. and your yeah and, and what you were building it's like okay to do that we need to be here totally you well know? i mean most of what we did didn't work yeah you know we're not doing what I did for those 15 years still. <laughs> totally. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, and like, I think that that's another like thing is just like, don't get precious about yeah. your, your work. Like the, the, I feel like we get like, so like, but I spent all this time and all this mm. money, you know, oh, we yeah. like, oh my gosh, a couple years ago. Yeah, sunk cost. Yes. Like, we oh, literally but the sunk cost of $200,000 into a design on a frame that we, a, a lot of, um, we sell really big art prints. Mm -hmm. We sell all set, you know, and we're launching frames yeah. and we're doing, you know, but for a long time, we just, we print really big prints that you can um, hang in Ikea's. Yeah. Um, frame system we did or it. whatever. Awesome. Good. Yeah. So That's great. Uh, it's funny, <laughs> like you're saying 2020 was your, your best year. Yeah. I think my wife, she got so tired of staring at this Blank walls. Blank walls. That's it. That <laughs> Seriously. Is, that's it was like exactly everyone's what, at yeah. home. Yeah. Everyone's like in their house. Yeah. And yeah. so it was, totally. yeah, we got a big print. And it was like, oh, this is awesome. Like, yeah, it covers a lot of the wall. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it takes care of business. It's perfect. Totally, so. yes. It, anyway. and, and, and frames are expensive. You know, yeah. they're, they're, it's hard to, especially something that size, it'd be, yeah. you know, 1200 yeah. bucks or whatever to frame it at a custom framer. So, okay, so 200 bless K IKEA. On a, so, we, so we were like, okay, well, we're really like riding the coattails of another company here. If IKEA changes their, their, you know, their design or if they drop that line yeah. or whatever, yeah. like this is 50% of our, of our mm. revenue is, is tied to these Ikea specific Ikea sizes. It's European sizing. Yeah. So it's like, totally. it's not like they can just like run to Michael's and grab yeah, a yeah, replacement yeah. frame. So we thought, okay, what's the wise thing to, you know, we've got all uh, this cash, like how can we invest mm. it into something that we will own? So we hired this very fancy um, industrial design firm we got caught up in names. I mm. think that that was like, we just mm -hmm. felt like, okay, you know, Let's I think this. it's like, we're going to do yeah, it. Let's well, you know how you get it. like a little bit like playing house a little oh, bit yeah. with business of totally. just like, Oh, this is what businesses do. Yeah, have yeah. Money, yeah. You know? And yep. so we like kept, we flew a couple of team members out mm. every time we went, yeah. you know, it was just like, you wanted to feel, you yeah. know? And I think when you're in the weeds of business, oh, yeah. you're so tired. You want to feel like, I'm a bad A. Totally. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. I, I've earned yeah, this. I deserve you. it. Yes. Like, we're going to do this right. And yes. Like, yes. Yeah. Totally. Totally. And it was a big old goose egg. Just oh, did not no. work. And we, we just walked away from a lot of money. And, yeah. you know, I think that we could have kept driving on it, but it was pretty, I mean, my instinct from a couple meetings in, which I should have, that was yeah. a really good learning experience for me. I should have just Trust been like, not working and walk yeah. from it then when we were only 50K in yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, you know, you, you spend that money and you're like, I gotta trust the process. Mm, this is, like, totally. these, guys, these guys know what they're talking about or whatever. And if your instinct is off, yeah. like peace, like no mm. matter how much you've spent, yeah. like just, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's really wise totally. to, to follow that instinct. And so, you know, and those good are learning. Re really yeah. hard decisions to make. Totally, oh, yes. yeah. And they burn, but I think yeah. that, I think that, you get used to just like releasing that yeah. feeling of like, oh, I learned, I learned something from that. And like, we mm -hmm. had the money to spend. Yeah. We're okay. Yeah. Now you, now you know what not to do. You know, like, yeah, it's still, I think that's the, the what's so and like fun to me about business and is like, it's such a education through trial and error. Like yeah. you, you learn more by doing it, especially yeah. for me, like I'm, I'm hands on and visual and like seeing it in action, like yeah. I'll, I'll learn that lesson. And, and, and unfortunately, sometimes you have to learn at least the hard I'm way. That, the, <laughs> the type of person that has to learn the hard way for yeah. some reason. Yeah. Um, That's so true. But I think that like it's still $20,000 of education that you couldn't pay to get like the decisions you make now moving forward will have 
like lasting impact on that investment yeah. that you made, regardless of like, yes. yeah, it would have been nice to, to not go down that path. Yeah. But I think the, the, the beauty of running a business is it's just like constantly this process of education and trying mm -hmm. and learning and growing and, you know. Yeah, I feel like, you know, I feel like I've learned, like gained an MBA in, totally. in this, through this experience. And I have a lot of confidence in my ability to start and run a business. So mm -hmm. if something happened and people don't want art prints anymore, I know I can start another business successfully. Yep, yeah. Like I, like I have, it's, that feels like an asset that I've grown. Totally. That, yeah. that I, that I'll always own, which is, yeah. is a good which feeling. Is far yeah. better than paper you can right hang on right i mean yeah. yeah you can't hire that right you know <laughs> totally. and, and right the piece of paper yeah yeah <laughs> and i think a lot of people don't see that with businesses that are successful they don't a lot of times hear the story of like this might be someone's third or fourth yeah. crack at doing something totally yes uh and all the work that that goes into you know i think about the bands or filmmakers or that kind of thing it's like no one hears all the bands they were in high school or mm -hmm. in through college and, you know, all the success. And so that's, um, that's always that's a there, hard though. thing. You know what to, I mean? Like that's yeah, never not there. Yeah. Like, I think that's what is like, like there's no one that just got like magically yeah. like, what is it? It's like a uh, overnight success story yeah. Yeah. 20 years in the making or something yeah. like that. Uh, it's always it's like, like, no, 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 there's always from the outside <laughs> view. It's like, Oh, it's just yeah. like, that just happened for them. Yeah, they just blew up. Or I'm sure people have said that about you at various stages of your career. It's like they really didn't see you hustling and grinding and you know Working writing these blog without posts yeah. without yeah. any. And that's like the like, that's like the nature of social media now is you don't get yeah. to see the build, the build up. Totally. Well, you and, just I, see and, people's I, like and I do worry successful. too if that younger generation is watching this. I mean, what do they say that like however many I think it's like seventy five percent of kids polled want to be influencers as like when they when you yeah. yeah. like they don't want to be doctors YouTuber, and lawyers and yeah, YouTubers. YouTubers yeah, yeah, content totally. creator. I yeah. want to be paid to travel. <laughs> My kids even say that, and I'm like, yeah. what part of this did you watch and think that this was an easy job? Like yeah. none of our like none yeah. of it. It's like you give your life for it. But you know, I think that. Also, what's happening right now, I mean, you know how the um, on Instagram you can get paid to just post yeah, yeah. Yeah. now. Like like Instagram will pay you, yeah, not yeah, even yeah. as yes. like a sponsored thing, but they're just like they'll... Because they're losing lots and lots of eyeballs. Yeah, totally. Right. Mm -hmm. And so right, like, uh, oh, yeah. Like, oh, can we pay you to like... Can we pay you yeah, to be to uh, uh, an employee mm -hmm. of our platform, exactly. basically? Exactly. Right. Totally. Yeah. But I think some of the like sort of like that's a whole thing. Yeah. But also I think the sort of like some of the like you know, as we all talk about that kind of as a thing and as, as, as kids are hearing about these like numbers yeah. and whatever, it's just like this really like false feeling of mm. like, this is, you know, this, like, the, like, the, like it's, it's not easy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's not totally. easy to get there, you know, and there is, there is kind of a little bit of like a, there needs to be like a couple of things yeah. in place in order for it to work at that level where it's like a really truly yeah. like full-time sustainable thing. Yeah. I just feel like I need to put that disclaimer no, in there because, actually, yeah, you know, I think that sure. it's easy to be like, you know, oh yeah, I'll just be an influencer. Start and, like, a podcast. And, and like think the world is changing be, you know, too. You know, change you know? the world with your content. Yeah. Have right. you thought with, cause you know, your shop exists on Instagram. Do you guys have a TikTok account? We, we dabble. We are, we talk about it all the time, but the truth is that most of our shoppers are, are kind of aged out of TikTok. They're like uh -huh. 29 to 40 nope. is okay. like our group. And I'm going to, I'm going to, Tell you that that is a wrong analysis. Oh, for, for me? <laughs> mm -hmm. There are way more older people on TikTok than you think. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I believe it. Oh, yeah. I believe. Uh, yeah, totally. For mm -hmm. sure. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. tell me, all, all my employees are like, I'm not on TikTok, so I'm sort of like, totally. error, you know. No, like, I, I, and, and not, not even to say it, like, it's just, I think that that is like, there's a massive opportunity on, like, there's more and more older people people are using it just like our generation used youtube yeah like yeah. search is like people like people are looking up diy and searching in that which this is something more recently that i've kind of like discovered and really opened my eyes to how less of the demographic the more how are people using the platform mm. and they're using it to learn like learn that's crazy. Instead more of going to YouTube. Instead of going to YouTube. Why do you think that is? 
It's shorter, just that's where they are. That's where they are. Shorter videos. Yeah, it's just, yeah like, and, and it's just they're already yeah. spending their time there. That's where they already are. Yeah. And so it's like, oh, let me and search. And they have better search functionality than Instagram. And it's, they, they, their search functionality is ba- like how TikTok set up is based on interests. And they've really cracked the algorithm mm-hmm. instead of on the Googles is like very much search. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook is very much follower and like yeah. connections that way. TikTok, because of how they've started and just how they've built out the platform, they've whatever their mix is is so much on interest graph versus because you you follow people, but like you don't even go to the follow page. You know what I mean? The default page on TikTok is for you, mm-hmm. curated based on who you follow and what you interact with. Yeah. So they like their uh, algorithm and and how they curate the videos that you see is because the default is a curation mm-hmm. instead of Instagram, and it's switched now. But like, right? The default when the platform was growing was okay here's the people you follow and you're just going to see that yeah tiktok's the opposite Mm -hmm. and so they just have a really so you go and search design tips all of a sudden that interest is going to be integrated into like very interesting touch points into what you see on your for you page. So you're pro a Juniper TikTok account. Oh, uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so what I'm saying you is, you would have my employees. One hundred percent. TikTok yet? You should be doing TikTok. Yeah, like what's what's been the hurdle, or what you said you've been talking about it a bunch. Like what have been the things that have made you like we don't know what to do on the platform yeah. or like what is it what has it been i think yeah i think it's it, it feels a little bit like it's easy for me to be like oh it's just one more thing you know like totally. do, and like and instagram works really well for us you know like let's just like stay in our lane right now but we're doing a lot more reels lately mm-hmm. like we yeah. we produce a couple a week now and like might as well right yep like i know totally. people are just like double dipping and also a couple of the people on our content team are like TikTok stars. Yeah. They like will post stuff and then get millions of views. And Exa- it's just why like, wouldn't, it's I know. Like she the just reach know, is yeah, insane. Yeah. And she, and she's, and she's, they're very much in the like, I don't even really go to Instagram anymore. Kind of, oh, you know, the, uh, totally. Yeah. 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 And more and more. And, and like, that's where like, even like thinking about it, like producing a show, you're talking about, you're going to do HTTV, you know, things like, Producing a show for TikTok and YouTube Shorts could be really interesting. So mm. YouTube Shorts is another really, it's very like organic. They're trying to obviously compete with TikTok, but based on interest and based on, so like <clears throat> different than, because now YouTube feels, especially to this younger generation, a little more stale. You've got yeah. like, you're going to a channel for a specific like mm-hmm. topic or, or thing where, yeah. You're That's not like why served YouTube up. Show, yeah, you're yeah. not served up yeah. content that is like, oh, you like art, maybe mm-hmm. you like photography, you like, and so yeah. there's that curation aspect that the TikTok does a really good job at, and so yeah, that's a whole. Like- we could we could go really deep on that, but I think finding a way to like be there and to get out of your mind that the audience on TikTok is young, they're not. Mm. Even though that's how it feels, it's it's it is the data and and everything shows that it's a much more mature. And the hard part is because, like you talked about, you started this off with, or we were talking earlier about um, your numbers and the data. Like even more and more ads that convert are becoming obviously less impactful with updates totally. but um millennials or younger the gen z crowd gen z. Is, is definitely like skipping ads and, and again yeah for sure you're, you know that's not necessarily your target audience but i think when you can show up organically people like and those ads get served to millions of people mm-hmm. because it's just an organic reach yeah i want to print in my house and then they're going to like yeah dig deeper totally you know yeah. versus like how do we get in front of someone get them to convert on that like ad will, or that, I, I, t- I will say on so. that front like we like paid influencer stuff mm. we have found that the tiktoks influencers 
like yes. their their return is totally. way higher oh, really? than our Instagram yes. influencers. Yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah, and also that micro influencers on Instagram, their return is way higher. Oh, totally. Than than the bigger. Yeah. The bigger accounts. Yeah. People pick up on it, like when it yeah. feels. It really, right. it really yeah, does it feel like, and... yeah, like go where the people are and and where there's like engagement. Mm-hmm. And people are on TikTok right now for yeah. sure. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like we used to go down the YouTube rabbit hole, and we call it like we're all sitting around. It's like YouTube fest, right? Everyone share videos they found on mm-hmm. YouTube when you're hanging out with your family, or whatever. Uh-huh. But now it's like it's like the TikTok rabbit hole for sure. is yeah. totally. is more yeah prevalent. I'd say. I totally yeah. agree. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, shift gears a little bit. I don't even know what we were <laughs> talking about before TikTok. But well, she never shared what her. Uh, I'm curious to know what your favorite brands are. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, so talk to us a, a little bit about. So talked about brands and and inspired by their brand uh, that you feel does it right that that really implements like sound business practice practices, but also has this like really uh, compelling either story or visual or um, that kind of pairs both this like aesthetic and design or or lifestyle, but also Mm -hmm. you feel like does business in the right way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, You know, I, I, the reason I brought up that I got off track (laughs) with the winter, the winter story is that I, I feel like I, it's really easy to get into like a comparison game. Yes. You know, you kind of have to take those moments. It's just like, I can't, I just like, can't look I at like, it. I, then and it, get... it's like, it's only like paralyzing me, totally. you know, like it's not inspiring me. It's yes. not giving me ideas. It's literally just making me feel like, like I'm oh, either copying somebody did this. or exactly, yeah. or making me feel like I'm failing mm. or, you know, and totally. so I think that, uh, you know, so I sort of have like stopped consuming mm-hmm. social media, um, for, for the last, really the last year. So I yeah. feel like I'm kind of like out of it, like sort of, I, I do know that, um, okay, then talk to us about Diet Coke. Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> what comes to mind when you think about Diet Coke? Uh, <laughs> happiness. <laughs> yeah. Pure joy. Pure joy treats. It's yes. my treat. Yeah. yeah. I know it's not good for me, but it's, oh, but it's it is great my for treat. you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You know, uh, one brand that I, feel like has just, like I'm inspired by the way that they just like fully own their their like style and their creativity it's mm. this um, women's clothing brand called Doen mm. it's like Doen Doen D O E N uh-huh and they have just really they post like really random stuff actually on mm. their feed um like like artworks that just feel really on brand it just feels like this like experiential Mm. brand yeah um and their website's really just like lovely well done and you do feel like it's not like you don't feel like you're there to buy a dress you Mm. know you feel like you're having an experience totally Mm. um and i love that i do I, i admire that i feel like that's like not at all what we're doing, but I, it's like, okay, I can learn from this. Like, Mm. I feel like this is like, this feels different than other clothing sites, you know? Yeah. And I would love for our, um, I love the like narrative element. Mm, And I think that people are sort of craving more of that. Like, you know, we're missing a little bit of that, like real connection, deep dive stuff, you know? Um, it's it's not there anymore. And even like (laughs) what William was describing with buying a print, filling the space in his house, like, there's a narrative there of that, like the same thing has happened to me. It wasn't one of your prints, but it like a space in our house that you, Shawnee bought this like tapestry and put it up and it just like, I mean, we still, it's like one of two pieces of art in our entire house. Cause we've just <laughs> been slacking, but we put it out and it just instantly changes the dynamic oh, yeah. of the home. Yeah, like for sure. It goes from just a space that you are living in uh-huh. to like. Oh, I live here. I don't know. Yeah, yeah like yeah, yeah. like a home or yeah. even more than that. Like that's way finished. And, and I want to at some point talk about space. Yeah. Not outer space, but space. <laughs> I don't have much. I want to talk about space. Outer space. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm fascinated by that topic. But yeah, me we'll, too. We'll get there. Um, anyways, yeah, so they've created this journey, this yeah. experience, and, yeah. and it's different. And, like, um, 
do you think that how have they accomplished that like how like because it's one thing to come up with a concept like application of an idea there's like such a big like yeah. you have like oh we're going to create a lifestyle brand we're going to yeah. do these images is there something is it an authenticity it is. is it a like it is yeah what do you feel like makes that cuz cuz i could say there's brands that like put out cool photos yeah and it's like yeah it's cool but it's like I feel like it's marketing to an end yeah How, have they done it in a different way is there something more core that you feel. It, it, I think it really does feel like there's someone, like an artist mm. behind it that's yeah. really like this is their vision. And yeah, I think cool. the more as the of, as a founder that you can like meditate in mm. and zone in and come in and 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 nurture and let that build and like it's really like don't look around at what yeah, other yeah, people yeah. are doing but like what do I have to offer? Who am I? What do I what do yeah. I have to say? And then, and then be really open about sharing yeah. that, you know, and vulnerable about, uh, about that. And not, and again, just like really be careful about watching what other people are doing because mm. it's so, I think we, we got into that a little bit in 2020, yeah. 2021. And then suddenly it felt like all of our social media and everything just sort of felt like what other people were doing in the kind of like home design space or whatever. Yeah, and it yeah, felt yeah. like I was not as much a needful part of the narrative, mm. which, you know, was, was intentional at the time, but I totally. actually felt like we lost a little bit of our special sauce mm. totally. when we did that. And so then you're just executing on what you think, Oh yeah. Uh, the space needs or the, to like be competitive versus yeah. like honing in on what makes you, you special. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Have you guys done a process of like your brand archetype? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. And that was, that was really, really helpful. But again, I felt like when we got to the end of it, it was like, it really felt like it was like the best thing we could do was just like, let me be more yeah. of a, of a voice totally. in the company yeah. Yeah. and like, let it be, you know, it's like, who is Juniper? Like we like did this yeah. whole thing and it's like, okay, it's me. It's you. It's, me. <laughs> yeah. it's like, okay, we did it. Yeah, oh, it's Jenny. Uh, <laughs> Which oh, I okay. hated that. Totally. Like I was just yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. can't be me. Like, yeah. like I'm so tired. And also like, why do I have all you people here then? If, yeah. if, we're, if like, it's just me. If it's then... just me. Right. But that that's not at all how I really felt. No. But, you know, but, you know, I think that it can feel a little like exhausting where you're like, okay, so now yeah. I have to well, do this. Well, because you also think about, this, okay, and, you know you always have to be thinking in some way, especially a product company, it's like, what if there is an acquisition or what if like, yes, even if that's not your goal, you also have to build a sound business. And, and I think that idea creeps in that, well, if it's based on me, no one's going to want to buy this business. And they shouldn't, you know? Yeah. And, it'll and like if, if it, it really actually is. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I think there's, there's also, uh, I think a misconception in like the personality of the like every company I think has this uh, it's like um, it's like the like how to describe there's just an imprint of the founders yeah. in in some way the culture the yes. the decisions I actually did a uh, when we we before uh actually before we sold keep nature wild we were in the middle of like a brand refresh and really dialing in like all the you know five years of because because brands evolve too it's For not sure. it's like yeah uh, i think you i think we when we set out building a company or brand it's like okay, i gotta get this exactly right because mm -hmm. like it's gotta communicate my mission and my vision and my values and all that's important but i think it's all it's equally Changes, as important yeah. to recognize that it's an evolution it's gonna and be it's, an evolution for sure and it and, and it's okay to set very clear parameters like this is who we are today and you go down that path and it could be a month it could be three years that that's the path but like focusing in so that when the time inevitably comes, it's like, Oh, pivot, pivot time. Yeah. And let's yeah. evolve the brand. And then it's, and then, cause, cause if you think of a brand, like a person, we evolve every day, yeah. we're every year, every month of our yeah. lives, like we're learning, we're growing, we're, we're challenging ourselves. And, and I think a brand is, is so much more like uh, a person yeah. in, in that aspect. And like that personalities change and we, evolve because of experiences we've had or people we've connected with or, or whatever 
And I think that, so through this process, I met with this, this guy who was like head of Adidas brand for like 13 years and we we're just having a conversation and it was like, ended up being like a two hour long conversation about decisions and um, about like what the Keep Nature Wild brand. And then we, we kind of evolved our brand archetype to, the, we called her the compassionate connector, mm. um, connected to herself and, and nature and experiences and people. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting is like the decisions we had made before really distilling that down, it was like, it turned into this like brand discovery session, but also therapy. Yeah. Like this weird, like, <laughs> like, well, so why do you host these events in yeah. the way that you do? And, and he was like, do you think that like, that's how you like show, it was just like <laughs> these decisions that Cam and I had made that were so much an extension of who we were, even if they weren't like, yeah. okay, yeah. I am the brand. And so the brand does this. Yeah. It's like, we're going to host events and we're going to make them all about connecting and making friends because like that's just naturally we how are. we yeah. we are and we want people to make friends we want people to connect totally. and like you know to to create these experiences and so it, it was just this eye-opening experience of like you're under the microscope. therapy <laughs> you know yeah. like of like oh we make those decisions and i think that's something that when you do that process and you can really like extract from yourself and put on paper, that's how you enable, you know, the, there's like that, there's like an image of like biz, business as a founder, like eventually you have to like, not just be like, uh, what's it called? Like a spoke, like centralize, uh -huh. centralizing the brand, right? Yeah. That it can still be about you, but you have to like build these other spokes where like, you know, you can give ownership and like you were saying like with customer things. service, yeah. right? Like, yeah. Hey, this is how, what we yeah. do, but now like someone can run customer service and make those decisions yeah. as if Jenny would make them, yeah. but you've empowered them through things that you've like extracted yeah. out of just how your brain works. When we were kind of making this like course correction after we felt like mm -hmm. we had kind of like diluted our story to make it more palatable for a wider yeah. audience. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we sort of re reorganized our team a little bit and we came, we came back and I did like a whole week of like training mm. of like creative training. Like totally. this is what I like. Yeah. This is how I think about design. This is how I think about space and home mm. and, and art and working with artists. And this yes. is what I think about community. And this is the type, you know, just really do like a brain download. And I actually think that that maybe was the most helpful yeah. meeting that we'd had in years just because of, if people were like, oh, mm -hmm. you do. Oh, that's what you like. Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah that makes sense why you would. Got it. Yep. Okay. And now I know how to respond when I get this type of email or when we get this yeah. kind of DM or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I think it's really like, that's the job of the founder is not to, yep. not to do everything, not to hold it all. And, and but also not hope that everyone reads your mind that, okay. So, <laughs> so that, hard. and that, that, that's me. And yeah. I'm like, how do you not know this yeah. about me? But I'm what like, how I have not explained <laughs> this. I have not said this. And so you have who to, I you, am. Have, you have to say it totally. You have you to have say have it and then you have to say it again. And then and you have to say it again. And build systems around it. And then you have to stop people in meetings and say, hold on, wait a second. Yeah, I totally get what you're saying when you said that. What? Where? I just want to clarify real yeah. quick. This is how we need to think about. Yeah. You know, whatever. Something. You um, know. Uh, have you listened to or read the book uh, Radical Candor? Yes. Really Which great. I'm yeah. terrible at being candorous, and so I know um, it's we're uh, too nice. Is that a word, candorous? Yeah. Yeah. It you, is? you just made yeah. it a word. I no, it's not. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, having proper candor. Yes. Uh, yes. Um, <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Yeah. And I think the most eye-opening thing when reading that book is because I feel the like the anxiety of negative candor, but like even positive candor can be done very wrong. And like so that true. was like this very toxically done. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, she gives the example of like, uh, you know, me, we could both be working on something, but you only see that. I turned in the work and so you in front of the whole crowd or the whole, you know, whatever, say, Sean, thank you for, for, do, for doing this. You did such a great job and you think you're doing this effective. I feel really pointed. And, yeah. and it's like, we take time when we want to give negative feedback. We got to find all the, okay, what happened and why? And okay, what, like, where was the fail points? Okay. Now I'm going to go and like present this, you know, negative feedback. So we improve. 
but it, we, we never, or it's not as automatic to like take time for positive candor and positive feedback. And so that was, the, it, it helped me understand negative and positive that how uh, feedback should be given and how to, it's still a, a great weakness of mine, but I think it's, it's eye opening to really think about candor and being able to course correct in those moments because then that's how people can learn and that's how you get out of your head these things that are innately decisions or mm -hmm. emotions you have about the brand or things that the way that you'd want to do them can be so much more quickly decentralized yeah. from your brain can i i would love for you to disagree with me on this because mm -hmm. i would love to have a conversation about it but um i realized a couple of years ago that i can't be a friend and a boss mm. effectively. I can be friendly mm -hmm. and, and I can even be emotionally supportive, mm -hmm. you know, but, um, I can't really have like a personal relationship with my employees, um, mm. out, outside of the workplace. I can't personally. And so maybe, mm -hmm. it, maybe it's more of a personal thing, oh, but yeah. I found that I, as I was like, we were getting to the point where like, if this company is going to succeed, I have to be able to deliver real feedback. Mm -hmm honest feedback and, um, and not loaded yeah. positive feedback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't do passive aggressive and I don't, I totally. don't like, I don't want my people to yeah. like, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. but I also have, I struggle to, I don't want to get ag aggressive, aggressive, especially yeah, yeah, in front yeah. of other people or whatever. So it was like, this is going to be, you know, I've had to do some self coaching on totally. like, on like, this is, this is, make or break it for the, yeah. for the company. And I have to develop this muscle, you yeah. know, to be able to get through this. But I realized it was because I was, when you're mm. really close with, yeah. with, especially if you're a team under of under 20 call totally. or whatever, it's like, so I kind of had to say, Hey, I'm never going to be able to come to an after work thing. Mm. Um, and I, and I did it in a way that like explained, you know, it's just like, I, you just have to like draw some boundaries or whatever. And again, it might be a personal thing, but yeah. like, I felt that it was, and might be a, a female thing too. Mm. I don't know if that's like a, a I don't know, or just no, like huh? a, a, just like a, you know, a level of, of closeness. And, and, you know, I think we can, you can be really intimate, you know, yeah. and share important things together and support each other. But, but I think as you know, and, and this is, we've never talked about this, but I think uh, in a lot of ways, we're similar in wanting to connect and and have relationships. Like you're you're a very connected person and friendly person, and I've been to your house multiple times where you've hosted, you know, and created a really great experiment experience and atmosphere for whatever mm -hmm. conversations we were having with a group of people. Um, and so I think that there's, whether it's people pleasing or, uh, you know, the, the need or, or desire to be liked or be friendly or, mm -hmm. or just like create a positive experience for people where it's like, hey, I want you, I want the best for you. I want mm -hmm. you to have that. Like, th that's interesting. I, I think it, it resonates for me, like uh, thinking about friendship and and feedback and like it's just it's it's different mm -hmm. when you can and i think it's finding that balance i think that you can probably your next evolution will be finding ways where you know because you do it with your husband mm -hmm. right yeah you know it's like you have a uh, and I don't know, maybe that's, maybe, I, I guess I'm making assumptions that that's a, that's a good dynamic, uh, working and personal relationship, but it's, it's like boundaries are, so it's like gets into boundaries, it's boundaries. And, yeah, yeah. and like, how do you separate personal relationship? Mm -hmm. And I get that, like, it makes a lot of sense to me where it's just like, Hey, we're friendly. We have a great relationship and, and friendship within the business, but like, I'm going to have my personal friends and then my, this has to be our, you know, our priority. Relationship. Um, yeah. yeah. And I think that, that a way of, uh, of maybe evolving that to, to where it doesn't feel like it has to be so cut and dry is communication and like finding like, look, like this is, and, and also enabling them to do the same. Mm -hmm. I think when you can feel comfortable that, you know, they will tell you, when you're doing something wrong or, yeah. or right, yeah. like that you can improve or like, Hey, yeah. this was really great. And you can have that like 
candor back and forth. Do you, did you do one-on-ones a lot? We started doing them a lot more mm-hmm. uh, towards the end of the business because it, it was game changer. Like it's yeah. it like, and we, cha- we like, um, I can't remember who, uh, I think Cam had read a book or a podcast where, where like, we changed it from like, okay, we're going to set the agenda to they would set the agenda. Yeah. Like, this is your meeting, not mine. Oh, I always tell them if I'm talking more than 10% of the time, I'm talking too much. Yeah, this, like, is, this not, is for you. This yeah. is all you. Yes. And like, yeah. what do you need and what's working and what's not working? And yep. I actually just listened to this TikTok or video from Simon Sinek. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he relates this story of this. He's in Vegas for conference speaking, he's staying at the Four Seasons, stops by the coffee shop and interacts with this barista mm-hmm. at 1030 in the morning, like not a like busy time, just not really. So I was talking to the, the kid and he's like, oh, whatever. And then ends up asking him like, oh, do you, do you cause he was just so like nice and, and like helpful. He's like, do you like your job? He's like, I love my job. And he's just like, it's like, like radar. Wow. He's like, yeah. you love your job? Like a coffee shop <laughs> like, in a hotel? Really, really? So he talks, then he like, dive, he, uh, then he like starts drilling in. So like, what, what makes you love this job? And he's like, well, every manager, not just my manager, but every manager in the hotel, when they walk by me, they ask, Hey, what can I do for you? What do you need to make your job better? Like, what are you missing that, that you're in, you need to like perform the duties of your job? And so he's like, so I just, Oh, I feel like I can be myself. I can be outgoing. I, I like, because I'm empowered, yeah, like yeah, everything's yeah. valued. He's like, yeah. I also work at another hotel where my managers are always looking for the mistakes I make. Yeah. So there I just clock in, I'm quiet. Yeah. I don't, and Very he's minimum. like, the same person has a literally a different personality based on where they work because yeah. of the environment that has been. So amazing. I think that when you really think about how do you enable communication and conversations mm-hmm. and candor around like what is it that empower and each person's different mm-hmm. what one employee is motivated by which could be their paycheck yeah. versus just working in a cool mm-hmm. and so those one-on-ones like which i don't think really, people are as motivated by paychecks anymore no yeah, totally. yeah I, don't, I don't think that that really works yeah. you can't like entice yeah with money. it's not mm-hmm. enough to say oh it's yeah. like Okay, but what are what's the culture like, and what's what am I going to learn? Yeah, and how is I mean, this gonna... at one point we started to notice, which had never been the case ever in the history of me having employees. Um, about you know a year or two ago, we noticed that there was like a lot of like clicky mm, drama. Yeah. Not a lot, but like yeah, yeah. I, I was like, what? Whoa, what is this? We don't do this, guys. Yeah. Like, what's going on? Like, that's literally like in our handbook, like talking yeah. about like, we, you know, like totally. we just know drama. I'm not a dramatic person yeah. and I don't, you know, I don't like gossip. I don't want to, like, mm-hmm. I just, it's like come to work and have fun, you yeah. know? And so, and it felt a little bit like people were talking about each other and, and that's when I was like, I'm not doing enough one-on-ones. Yeah. And, and, and so we, you know, we get back to, to this and, and just listening, let it be a little bit of a mm-hmm. therapy session and, and take notes and, 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 you know, and, and help, help them feel hurt, totally. you know? And, yeah. and it was awesome because we got to the root of what was going on yeah. within like a week, you yep. know, and then it's done. And then they're like, oh, what my husband yep. always says, it's, if you're complaining, it's because you don't, you're not empowered or yeah. something like that. Yeah, and it's good, like, it's yeah. like. Like you, we, you, everyone here so has true. power, you yeah. know, we all have power to, to shape our culture and mm. to make changes. And like, we want you, if you don't feel like you have that in our company, yeah. like we want to let you know you do, you yeah. know, and like, we want it, we want it to only be positive. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and in the, that's when you can reinforce those like key values yeah. that you have, because it's like, yeah. then you can actually put in practice because people don't like, people can think all they want about you, but they really judge you on what they see totally. and like the actions you take, yeah. you know, and you can have a, this beautiful playbook and handbook mm-hmm. and all these like yeah. core values, but it's like, is that actually what you're doing as, though? Yeah. You know, as yeah. soon as you step outside, which is hard to like reinforce, but it's like you reward bad behavior, even though yeah. it's seemingly minor where it's like, Oh yeah. You know, then like nepotism she doesn't really mean that. or like yeah, this totally. concrete. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. and then you get, you know, you're like, Oh, this is not even, yeah. But because, yeah, people, uh, uh, yeah, one-on-ones, I think, are, they're hard, I think, for someone who is just like, like, you are and I am, like, that you just want to, like, 
move and go and like yeah. let's get let's things done do yeah. this let's work hard and like figure it out and we'll but it's that slowing down that really enables you to speed up yeah yes i think walking around and just like vibing the room mm. who's feeling what yep what's going on what is going on in this relationship and just mm -hmm. like that is such an important skill set for totally. someone in the company yeah. you know if that's yeah. not who you are like make sure somebody's yeah. doing that yeah yeah, yeah. it doesn't have yeah. yeah it doesn't have to yeah. be right the ceo but um so you do these one-on-ones yes how often do you do them and then what are like the benefits that you've seen come from doing them and like what's your process like do you is it on a calendar like every mm -hmm. month we're doing this type of thing like what's your process with doing it and how have you benefited from doing it or how's the the business benefited from doing it i think uh, when we were kind of going through that big reorg the pivot or whatever i put them on the calendar once a week and so that um each employee had you know 30 minutes to an hour and really just to like and a lot of times you know after a few weeks they'd go like i'm good this week or whatever mm -hmm. you know and sort yeah. of like which was great. And then we moved to kind of like me just like feeling it out like as needed. So I would say I probably end up sitting down with each employee like once or twice a month, mm -hmm. um, but at least once a month, yeah. you know, where they really feel like they get the floor. But I'm, I, I am really trying to like constantly read the room mm -hmm. about who needs what, you yeah. know, or if I know somebody's going through a hard time with something or whatever, yeah. it's like, hey, hey, you know, got a minute or whatever, you know, and just pull them in or whatever. Yeah. Um, I think that, I mean, I always, whenever I've had jobs with a boss or whatever, I really value that like focused one-on-one totally. -on -one attention, you know, feels really, really, really important. And I think it's just sort of, you know, been able to, as we're trying to like Jenny as Juniper, mm -hmm. you know, like really being able to like download, you know, as they are like struggling with a project that they're working on or maybe with a team member or whatever, I can kind of like coach them on um you know maybe what's the priority or mm. you know what I, how i would want them to be thinking about it so they can let go of some of the anxiety they're feeling yeah. about not being on target with the project or whatever you know like it's just it's just good to be able to really really connect with them i think that that's but you know it's what i thought being a ceo <laughs> that is your job yeah totally that's that and, shift and from I, and i'm a very much like a what's the what's the thing mm -hmm. i produce today type yep. person to like feel my value you, you know? now produce your employees and that's it's hard that has stretched me big time yeah big time and you know and i wouldn't say that it's still even like my preference you yeah. know like i don't know that it's like i just love doing it totally. i love people yeah. i really do yeah i really really do but i feel a little bit like i'm a little you like you want to get yeah. your hands dirty in a different yes. way you want to create like, totally yes you know and there's there's something to that but but then there's like but then the business falls apart when you do that. Yeah. <laughs> or or just yeah. is gonna only reach a certain point that's you know right what I mean? like yeah. there's only so like you said there's only so many hours in the day there's only so much you can do and when you you've you know, flip that switch of like, well, what if I could, what impact could I have? How could my, mm -hmm. how could I scra scratch this creative itch and grow this business if I did these things and enabled? And so it's, it's different for sure. Cause now your job is satisfaction and livelihood and life yeah. of the people that work for you. That's right. That's right. And like the bigger you get, the, m the more, that is your job. I had this really interesting like aha moment a couple of years ago where I, somebody, I was at some sort of retreat or something like that. And somebody asked um, you to name your priority um, um, like currency, like mm. what it is that you want to maximize the most in your business and in yeah. your life. And I, I still kind of waffle depending on what's going on between flexibility and control. Mm. I don't really care about money. Money will come. I feel like yeah. if you provide something of value and you're totally. good to people and honest and kind and stuff and you know, that all yeah, works yeah. out. Um, especially if you're those things, I yeah. believe, you know, in the long run. Um, but I, I really like being able to like take off in the middle of the day. And mm. I, I think I told you guys before, like my favorite thing to do yeah. is like, if I'm having a stressful day, I just like, I don't even make an announcement about it. I just leave the office and I go to, to the movie theater. 
Yeah. I'm and I watch literally a movie by stealing myself. this from you. It's uh, the best because yeah. it takes two hours. You get a treat. Yep. You get your Diet Coke and your popcorn. Sit in a dark, yes. the way you describe and a no dark, cold place. That's my favorite thing about yes. going to the movie. It's dark. Yes. It's cold. cold. I have yep. a giant beverage. And now <laughs> movie theaters have free refills. I like, know. you just get to the top best. that thing off as most much as you want. Most of the time I fall asleep. Most of the time I'm taking a nap in uh, there, Yeah, now they have like a, a full on lounge. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and a movie in the middle of the day. It's like, and you got to like, take advantage no of that, that majestic theater right over there. Yeah, by yeah I, need to, uh, yeah. I need to start. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. It's a good little That's hack. Legit. Yeah, yeah. Take a little nap. I'm stealing that from you. Fill up your reserve a little bit. And I appreciate it. Appreciate having a lot of like flexibility in my day to yeah. you know to be able to go out of town for most of the summer, yeah. do whatever I want to do with my family. You know we have a place up north that we like to get away to. We only work in the office two days a work a week now. Oh, nice. we, we dropped that down um, just because we felt like you know after COVID, yeah, yeah, we went through the same evolution that everyone yeah. did of just like you know people right have balance? lives and yeah. I want them to have a life more than I want them to have a job. That was my you next know? question. Like, do you? Do you offer that? I know that you know you're the CEO of your brand, so you, you're able to do that. But mm-hmm. do you offer that to your like employees too? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Like if they came out and say, "Hey, I need to go to a movie for two hours," like. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's totally. in your culture. There is like full trust with. Yeah. Yeah, we do the like we we have a technical vacation mm. plan or whatever, yeah, yeah. but we basically say it's unlimited. Like it's just full trust. Like yeah, yeah. get your job done. We don't care. You know, like totally. love your job. Communicate. Yeah. Yeah, Tell us yeah, when plan you, like, for things, you know, yeah. but like, do what do you want to do? Yeah. You know, enabling yeah. them to live their life and for like that to play a role and not be their life. Yes, is important. I, we have a lot of working moms on our team, mm-hmm. and that's really, really, really important. I mean, you you guys know how it is. You have yeah. kids that it's just like oh, yeah. stuff comes up more often than it doesn't, you mm-hmm. know, for me as well as for them. And it's like, they, you know, they're very kind and they always like communicate and thank goodness for Slack. Slack makes it easy. So yeah, you don't yeah. have to like, hey, I'm like, totally. da, you know, or whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. just like, hey, guys got to run, but but I'll be on in cool. 20 minutes or whatever. And it's yeah, I don't even respond usually with yeah, yeah. thumbs up or whatever, you yeah. know, like no big deal. Like but there's just a, a built in trust that I think mm-hmm. is actually kind of non-negotiable anymore. Like if you're not doing that as a company, mm-hmm. like people are like, it's just yeah, the way uh, that things are going. Well, you know? especially if you want to attract top talent. Talent. Like if yeah. you like, you know, business is getting away with it, where it's just it's commodity. The the work is like, yeah, I need this to survive. I'm gonna yeah. clock in, but you're gonna get no what you yeah. like give basically. Absolutely. Where yeah. You want to attract really great talent that want to contribute, mm-hmm. that want to push your brand forward. You've got to think like the the last priority is the foundation of the opportunity is like the salary and the this mm-hmm. and the that. It's yeah. like, you know, what is that experience going to provide? Yeah. And, yeah. I think the thing that I read about about how people don't really care as much about I mean, they need to make a, a totally. living a, yeah. a wage or whatever, you know, but um, I think that they um, it's like this generation really values like self-actualization, mm. like that that's actually their their priority um, yeah. and and that that requires flexibility. Yeah. Right. Totally. But that if they're not truly feeling valued in the mm. company, if they feel like their contribution is not like critical to the yeah. mission then they're not going to be loyal, even if they're making great money, even if you are flexible, even if are, you are totally. super nice, but if they're just not feeling really needed, mm. then, and that's on you as like a leader. If totally. you're, if you're not putting, if you're not building the teams yeah. in a way that everyone has like a really great contribution, yeah. like that's where the problem started. You know? And going back to one-on-one. So we had just an incredible employee who started, uh, actually most of our great employees started as interns, but she started as an intern Managing actually the Sweet Cake social media account. Oh, cool. And then by the end, basically took over my entire job. Uh, <laughs> but she, like, we were going through this evolution about a year before we were acquired, where we were like growing and scaling. You know, we, yeah. we grew pretty significantly as well in 2020 and 21. And, and it was like she did an amazing job at like, the aesthetic and really curating our social media and engaging and building out social. And it's like, Hey, we want you to shift into like uh, a role that we guessed she would love. Mm. And then we had a one-on-one and it was like, Hey, we want to, you know, we want you to 
take on more responsibility and grow and to like kind of take some of this responsibility for me. And, and she's like, that sounds awesome. But actually I want to be, uh, the like e-com manager and like run emails. So like not front facing and wow. like very back end. Wow. And we're like, okay. wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and it was like, she so we kind of like okay so we need to so we had to like basically hire a role a different role yeah uh to to fill that in to move the pieces that we thought like mm -hmm. and, and so but she crushed it yeah. and she li like every step of kind of her journey in the company she just like was always really pushing herself and leveling up and and i think it was such a like like eye-opening experience of like we assumed she would love because she was so good at these things, but her favorite part was actually the more like technical and like the the like back end stuff. That's crazy. And uh, and it just I mean it was like so she then took on that role. We hired someone to run social, and and it just she really kind of found her what she loved. Uh, it was just such an interesting kind of transition of mm -hmm. of hey. I'm going to help. I'm going to let this is what I think you want versus mm -hmm. actually listening. And one of our like one on one. Totally. Right. One of our um, core values is scrappiness. Mm. And we we are constantly changing roles around. Mm. And I think that there was like a bit of, you know, for a little while, people were like, you know, what? Like it might, totally. you know, like, but, and we don't move everyone all the yeah, time, yeah. you know, but it's like, as the company grows, that's kind of a necessity. Oh, totally. And so we tell people from the get go now, like you, you're getting hired for this, but like, you might be anything. You might <laughs> like, be filling yeah. orders yes. at some point. It, absolutely. And totally. you probably will yes. during Black Friday. Yeah. 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 Right. Or, all hands on deck. Holiday. Just, <laughs> it's a different thing. Yeah. You're ready yeah. to just black and, out. And, and we, we do actually mention that because it's like the yeah. scrappiness element. In fact, we, we were interviewing somebody for like a higher level position and we were talking about our core values in the interview and she was like, interesting. And you know, she, this woman know, knew of my brand pretty well and she's mm. like, I wonder if you mean more like tenacity than scrappiness. Mm. And I was like, no. I mean scrappiness. Mm. Like I mean like roll up your sleeves and yeah. like and it's not even like a look at me I'm working no. in the warehouse. It's like, "Oh, you need help? No problem." You know, yes. like yeah. jumping in like totally. constantly like who who needs See something? something on the yeah. ground, pick it up. The office manager's like loading up the Diet Cokes from yes. from her Trader Joe's run or whatever. No, you can't buy Diet Coke at Trader Joe's. That was a Oh, well, true. Really? Clarify. Mistake, yeah. Wow. <laughs> Hear that Trader Joe's? I know, Joe's? That. I know yeah. exactly where you can buy Diet Coke. What's the deal with uh, Diet Coke? <laughs> but you know, we got to we all yeah. jump in. Totally. And and I think that, you know, if I'm if I'm finding I, I think paying attention to things mm. that you're kind of like bothered by, yeah. you know, where you're like, why didn't like they see me doing this? Like why aren't they like jumping right up? You know, mm. then it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. that's a core value for me. Yep. And I need to like be shaping yeah, the culture of my company that way. Reinforce that yeah. and say, hey, Reinforce this is... it, explain it to the people yeah. that, you know, uh, yeah, exactly. I love that. Yeah. That's... And then going forward, notice that it matters to you. Mm. What are some of the, I think, John, you're saying, what are some of the other core values that you have? And then also just listening to you guys talk, or that you said something about for people to be empowered. Yeah. If you're mm. complaining, then you're not empowered. Yeah. You don't have power. Yeah, and I just like love hearing about this one-on-one -on -one thing because when you do that, you create an opportunity for people to bring up, like you were saying that girl. to kind of complain a little bit, complain, <laughs> yeah, totally. but, then, but it's appropriate, right? Yeah, yeah. It's appropriate and then setting. they can feel yeah. empowered, and when you feel empowered, yeah. you you feel happy. Yeah, mm. yeah. totally, it's so true. Yep. Okay, so yeah. uh, other core values: scrappiness, yeah. scrappiness, generosity, which mm. which is under I think the technical phrase that we have is putting people first. Mm. Like I think that you know while I really care about our numbers, that's my job, yeah. you totally. know, and and yes. I don't and I'll convey whatever needs to be conveyed to our team yeah. about that. But like it's always people first mm. always 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 and that goes down to every single person that works at our company um to the ups pickup guy love that to, <laughs> yeah to and it's then important. especially to our customer i think you know we might get a, a customer service email that feels like for real mm. like seriously and, a, but you can't moments, that tone yeah. can't be in there you know <laughs> totally and we we above yes. and beyond always always always, yeah. always like just like shock them with the generosity and i think yeah. that that's it's a karma thing i think it comes back and it has worked really really well for us mm. and it makes me sleep well at night mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that's that's the um that's an important one for us scrappiness putting people first and putting care into everything that we do and i had this i remember our first black friday um it, we had just moved to our new warehouse mm. and the the office 
part of our of our offices was was being renovated. So we were all working out of the warehouse and we had literally moved in November 1st. As of the, we moved like, warehouses why? in October once too. Wow. Actually, every time we moved warehouses it was like always in busy season. October. We never November. made for like, it. What but it just is wrong with <laughs> so stupid. So, so I know I know the pain. So stupid. We yeah. were just literally just hurting and yeah. then, and we had been ordering massive amounts of inventory because you delay the like hey we need to move out of this thing until you're like oh shit <laughs> we have like we have to we move have now. to find a space because <laughs> they're kicking us just, out yeah. yeah totally for sure yeah yeah we yeah that was such a nightmare but i remember we were like you know we were packing orders and we were a little bit behind because we had, there was like a materials mistake that mm. we didn't know about until the last minute it was like could not be more stressful and um and we were just kind of all hustling and there was kind of a mood and and i just had this feeling of like we just need to like slow it down and bring it back mm -hmm. and and really think about the people that are going to receive these prints totally and so yes. i was like hey guys circle up like let's talk about this this sounds cheesier than it and I'm like rudy no, you know yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that cheesy it was cool yeah <laughs> but we we came together and i just said i just want you to imagine that every single one of these prints is going to a friend that yes. you're that you're like rolling this up and sending it to your grandma mm. or whatever and it's like put the love into it mm -hmm. and feel grateful that this is keeping us you know that we're in this space and that we're going to be here and that this is like providing us with such an opportunity to grow next year. And like, and like, it was like, everything yep. changed. changed and like, we just all felt, and then the vibe was good yeah, and we yeah. were stressed still, yeah. but we just had so much gratitude for mm. what was happening. Even though we were, we were grateful even yeah. for the stress, yeah. you know? Totally. And, and then that, that concept of, of care of yeah. like every little thing that we do, if we put purpose behind it, yeah, the, it just, it, it makes meaningless tasks. Yeah. I yeah. was going to say important. like, you give people perspective and context and it changes I worked for FedEx ground and like the daily average package, it was like 10,000, 15,000. And I was such a truck loader. Oh yeah. And so we would load trucks and then it would get to be holiday time. And it was like 25 to 30,000. Yeah. Like it was doubled. But I remember it was super stressful, but I remember same kind of thing. The, like the line manager came down. He's like, I want you to find every Apple box, anything that looks like it could be a <laughs> gift or a present for <laughs> yeah. someone and think about how that's going to make uh, someone happy and that has to get on the truck to and it was cool. like yeah these are okay. people yeah. i'm going to make a difference real in someone's thing. day yeah. totally yeah and, and bust my butt so that yeah, yeah people can get these gifts so yeah that's a that's a big thing just mm. like i mean it's not, it sounds really cheesy but sometimes i'll go out to the warehouse and i'll look at the packing slips and i'll read the person's name totally. and just be like just think about them as a person Gratitude, in a yeah. house, you know, like this is like this. Totally. Is, it's it's what makes your company. You have to you have to be that like centered yeah. on the people. Well, and especially know? with your product. And this will be a great segue because I want to talk about space. Your product is in people's most intimate locations. Mm -hmm. Like you are in people's homes. Mm -hmm. You are in their like places they don't let people into, mm. you know, their bedrooms, their kids rooms or, mm -hmm. or whatever, my bathrooms, like mm -hmm. you're in spaces that are very intimate to people mm -hmm. and changing what the experience of that intimate space is mm -hmm. or can be, yeah. which is, I mean, not to put like, any sort of crazy weight on you know or to make it more than it is but it is like it's an important thing that that like it is easy to get caught up in like okay we got to ship we got to get these orders out we got to yeah. do these things and i think taking that moment not only reinforced to your employees what your core values mm -hmm. are and like hey and there's something about mindset like switching where it's like like we used to do shows at Sweet Cakes all the time and I would get so stressed and like frustrated and like it was always hodgepodge and like throwing together. And I didn't know who was ever going to man the door to <laughs> collect the money. And then like I remember after one show, I just said like if, if all, none of that happens and we just have a good show, like it doesn't matter. And then like every time after that, it was just so different. And like I can't remember, someone talked, gave a TED Talk, I think, or something about how stress and excitement are basically the same, same emotion. emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you say yeah. I'm excited about this or I'm stressed about this, like your entire like experience of yeah. speaking or whatever it might yeah. be changes. Yeah. 
and I think it's those moments where taking that time to realign your team and yourself of yeah. like, hey, you know, we're stressed, but how can we be excited about yeah, this? Yeah, I love that. Yeah. How can we now change that to like now? It's like, oh yeah, like if I were to not get this gift or not have this gift delivered to someone that's mean, you know, mm -hmm. meaningful to me, like I would be sad and, yeah. and frustrated. And so like yeah. now it's like, okay, I'm stressed and I'm working hard and I'm like, exhausted because filling orders is like you know hard. it's hard yeah you got to read and check and yeah. like make sure it's accurate and then totally. you're like you know you get tired and physically. you're leaning over this yeah, for me right. as a giant like it doesn't matter how tall that table is it's uncomfortable uh but you do it and you figure it out but i think it's it's and and that's to me the power of authentic and real core values yeah these things that like I think a lot of times I think, oh, I've got, you know, I'm gonna, even if I don't print them out, which actually I think is vision to be, to see them is empowering, but, but it's just like, okay, yeah, cool. We have them printed on the wall or in a, yeah, but are you and you're hiring one? Yeah. yeah. But are yeah. are your, these core values enabling the business in a way that not having them? Yeah. Uh, wouldn't. Yeah, totally. Am, you know? am I out in the warehouse packing, packing orders uh, yeah. often enough? Like that's, totally. you know. Am I making tubes often yeah, enough? Because like you're scrappy. Out there, right. You, and, want, and, you want your and, team to be scrappy? And hanging out with my team and getting to know them. And totally. just like, you know, and showing them that like, I value these yeah. things so much. Thank you for doing these, yep. you know. And also I want to see process. Totally. And I want to give, you know, oh, some, that goes, you can oh, see maybe we should try thinking an about order that. list. Yeah. But there's something about like packing, packing it, it. And yeah. like shipping it. Oh, this is going to Phoenix. Oh, yeah. this is going to Boston. Right. Oh, is, it's like, yes. You, it like. I would hop in the Best warehouse ideas as well. Come from that. Yeah, yeah, because totally. like, oh, we're shipping a lot of stuff mm -hmm. to here or there, and like you could pull the you can pull the data, and and it's important to do it's that too. Though. But when you like feel it going out, it's like whoa. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's even a like, I'll correlate it to followers, and and I also want to talk about audience versus community. So if, if we get there, but. If, if there were 10 people sitting in this room listening to this conversation, we'd be like stoked that there were 10 people showed up and yeah. came in and like mm -hmm. spent their time to like listen. It's like if we get 10 listens on this podcast, you're like, oh man. That's a bummer. It's a bummer, right? right? And I think same with social. It's like, oh, if we get, you know, I got to get a million likes or I got to get all this engagement when it's like, if like you did something and like five people like, commented on it mm -hmm. and said hey that was really nice or that's cool or like yeah. i can't believe you did that like it, during our one person it's like pff, makes your day in real life mm -hmm. you know and so i think w when you fill order it's kind of you get that like oh yeah like these numbers are it's a unit of real one, right and it's one yeah. yes, yes there is one customer yeah. that has a life yeah that has a family or a home yeah. or a office or whatever that like Connected with us. You, yeah. yes. Yeah. That took that time totally. to put in their order, to print it or get a friend, like now put this in their intimate space. Yes. And like. And hopefully they come back. Yeah. And hopefully they tell their friends, mm -hmm. you know, and if, and if we put that care into totally. it, then they will. That, that maximizes it. Yeah. Like we can really stand behind our product and then we're, we're doing a good job getting them what they, what they ordered. 100%. Builds itself. What do you it's think like that the Disneyland magic, you know? Yeah. That's right. A little bit of, yeah. little bit of magic. You go, <laughs> go to the park and then you just want to tell everyone about it and spend all, true. take all my money. Disney. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, what do you think the balance is necessary between hard skills and soft skills to be successful at the scale you're at? That is a great question. Um, I think you can hire out hard skills. But it takes a certain level, like a certain fluency with mm. it to be able to make smart vision choices, yeah. um, to be able to like sort of like read the books, you know, um, but not so much that you need a business degree or mm -hmm. that you need to do more than like a little bit of reading and yeah. some YouTubing, you know, or even asking yeah. questions, you totally. know, just like ask your finance guy or ask your accountant, you know, just or like learning by show up. It's the care thing actually, again, mm -hmm. is really what it is, is it's like, it could be really easy to like 
be nervous about digging into the books and just mm -hmm. say like, I just gotta keep my head down and keep making money. Yeah. You know, but totally. spending money, you know, is, is, yeah. is just as important knowing yes. how that money is being spent as, as where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that, you know, relieving, releasing some of that like anxiety that p the business owners often get about like really digging into mm. cash flow and margin. Yeah. Um, it, and, and being curious. I think that's one of like the best qualities that any Absolutely. entrepreneur can have is curiosity. Like, don't yes. let it mean anything about you mm -hmm. or your perf who you are or what they're doing yep. or whatever. It's just get curious about it. I totally. wonder why they're doing it that way. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if that's working out for them because, mm -hmm. I th you know, just like questions, good questions all yeah. the time, you know, from your employees, from your community. Totally. I literally got the idea for the print shop by d paying attention to uh, what my community was saying about about a design project we were working on. Will and you talk was, about yeah, yeah? Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, for a long time I was working as an influencer, so sort of sponsorships with brands, and and then as a as a designer, so it was hourly essentially, and then markups mm -hmm. on furniture. Mm -hmm. It's a lot of hard work, a lot of hard, and and a lot. It's really based on your time. So I knew that we wanted to do a product at some point. Mm -hmm. um, I had been sort of learning more about business and just felt like. This is I'm going to grind myself into a fine powder yeah. <laughs> if I if I don't if I keep up at this pace. Um, and so we launched a, a pillow line and that was OK. It was OK. Mm -hmm. And I think it like worked out some kinks and sort of helped me figure out like a little, you know, a Shopify account, totally. you know, like yeah. how to build a Shopify site. Um, and, and some of these other things, but that really that the difference between the pillows and the, the print shop was that no one asked me for pillows. Totally. I thought people want pillows, <laughs> yeah. which they do. Can't like, find like the pillows, pillows I'm looking for. But, I, but I'm not just like laying itch? in bed, like thinking about pillow designs at yeah. night, you know, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like yeah. I am an artist, like totally. I've painted my whole life. I love photography and I love art. Mm. I love art. Yeah. I'm a museum nerd. I'm just like, it's like, it's really authentic for me. Yeah. And, um, and I'm a scrappy DIY kind of person. And mm. so I think that it was just this perfect synergy of like, this is an authentic extension of who I am as a person. I can do this for the rest of my life and be thrilled about it. I, I can't wait to, to even do more art, mm -hmm. you know, like I never get sick of it. And, and, you know, and you can get sick of designing houses. I, I can, yeah. I can, some people mm -hmm. won't and that's totally. great. And they absolutely should be doing that for the rest of their life, yeah, you yeah. know, but it was just one of those things that, um, you know, it was like, I had built this community that had this like common um, you know, like experience of like loving home design and loving DIY or whatever. And then as we were sort of sharing some, uh, we were installing a house in, in Portland mm. and uh, we had brought all the stuff up and there was a, a, a piece that had been left behind, a big art print that was like huge, like a 45 inch wide piece on mm -hmm. a huge, huge, huge fire piece, uh, fireplace. And we were, we were up there and we were going to shoot it at the same time. And it was like, we have to find something to, to put in this. So we, I went and I printed something at Kinko's, uh, just an image that I had on my computer. Kinko's. Yeah. And we went to, we went to the thrift store and we bought a $2. It was a cool, like gold, like metal, like frame that was two bucks. It had mm -hmm. crap art in it, you know? So we took the old art out and put in this like Kinko's print or whatever, and like <laughs> called it a day just because we needed something totally. on there for yeah. the photo or whatever, not thinking about it at all. And, and put it on my stories and everyone was like, can I buy that file from you? Uh, like I got, I don't know, 50, a hundred DMs asking, Crazy. Oh, if you, do you have that file? Would you, can I, can you should put it in Etsy and I'll buy the file from you. And so we actually had dri driven up to, um, to Portland. So it was like a 20 hour drive from Phoenix. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm driving back and we were late. We like literally it was like the last light. We were like taking the last photos and then like loaded up. So it was the middle of the night and I'm driving my whole team's in the back and I'm slapping my yeah. face, trying to stay awake. Mm. And I'm thinking about, huh, that was a lot of people that asked for that file. And, you know, and I, I for sure did not invent digital downloads or, no, yeah, or right. art print shops at all, at all, at all. But I thought, you know, this is an interesting synergy mm -hmm. of the stuff that I'm already talking about. It's really easy to incorporate this product into totally. the stuff I'm already talking about. Mm -hmm. So we launched, I spent three weeks, nights and weekends sort of just like building the shop on my own. And I put in, I think, 30 or 40 pieces, mostly, I think all my own stuff and vintage stuff that I had bought, scanned in. So and cool. launched it. And I think the first day we made like $5,000 oh, wow. on like just little digital downloads. And I was like, <laughs> wow. like, that's awesome. Yeah. For, you know, for three weeks of work or whatever, for sure. and, you know, and it ebbed and flowed yeah. after that. Like and it you wasn't, didn't have to fulfill anything. 
didn't have to fill in. That was yeah. only digital. Yeah. That was, oh, that was it, only, only digital. digital. And like yeah. little wow. 15, $20 products or whatever. But it was awesome. There was just Total. that. Again, that synergy with the community yeah. and, and producing something of real value. Something they were like, I want that. I want, like, I've been asking about this thing. Yes. And now you delivered it. You know? So I think being, like, again, asking the right questions, but also listening. Paying yeah. attention to what people are, like, asking about, you know, on your social is, like, give them what they want. Yeah. yeah. You know? How, how... Uh, to you, what's the difference between audience and community? The difference between audience and community. That is, that is a good one. I would say there are plenty of accounts that I am an audience member mm -hmm. and not as many that I feel like a true community member of. It's the people that I take the time to mm -hmm. either like or, or comment on or whatever, which it feels like a high threshold anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, um, I think it's a great, it's a great question to explore, um, for yourself. Yeah. Like we did this as like a team activity actually a couple of months ago where we were like, Hey, everyone think about maybe like, what are the, what are the accounts that you, that you're most engaged by? Like, mm. what are your top bubbles? Yeah. And like, why, like, why are you like, what is it? What's special about them? Like, why are you so connected with them? And it was fascinating. It yeah. was really, really interesting to see. And I really think it was the people who were kind of marching to their own drum, doing mm. their own thing and not just copying what everyone else is doing. And just totally. like, and also I noticed a lot of them were more niche. Like mm. they were like drilled into yeah. their thing and just doing their thing really, really, really well, you know? Yeah. And it might just be more of a vibe than even like a, a thing that yeah. they're producing or whatever. But it's just like, I think people are really attracted to just like a passion. Yeah. People are, people are, that's a magnetic thing where you just totally. feel like you, I feel attracted to people. Do you, you know, Krista totally. Coons, right? Mm -hmm. From her name is mud. Yeah. She, she's amazing. And she's she, she, you know, she doesn't have this like huge mm -hmm. team and she's not like a production studio or whatever. Yeah. She is an artist. Which we need to have her on the podcast. She, you awesome. absolutely yeah. need to have her on her mm -hmm. podcast, but she does this for know. the art, you know, yeah, yeah. And, oh, yeah. and she's successful, but you, she, she just oozes a brand totally. when you, when yeah, you go, she you, is, yes, she is her brand, her brand. and her brand and is like, her. That's and what like, it needs to be. Yeah. You know, it totally. just needs to be like when you meet them in person. Yeah. It needs to be the same, you know, mm. like it. And, and Krista is that she's, yeah. she's amazing. How do you think about building your community uh, for Juniper? It's it's hard. Mm. That has been a big challenge. And I think we're still trying to navigate that. Mm -hmm. um, um, but I, I think um, the goal is to to bring more personality back mm -hmm. into it, I think, um, and be a little bit more confident about that curation that yeah. ni that niching you yeah. know um i think that that can feel scary we're we're going to retire a bunch of prints this mm -hmm. this year just in the, for the sake of curation because yeah. things get stale you know yeah. and and i think that it's hard you know when you like run the uh, my, my husband's much more of like a numbers mm -hmm. side of things so mm -hmm. he's like i gave him the list of all the prints that i want to retire and he's like this is this many thousands of dollars of revenue yeah, those, are like, like, those are like those are like cash flowing assets yeah basically. even though they feel like bottom of the list stuff it's totally. like it's, they still earn money and mm -hmm. so like why are we getting rid of them and i'm like yeah but like what's the driver you yeah. know like are are we here for the money or are we here for the service and and the connection and the and the authenticity mm -hmm. and the cure and the truly like one of our Curation. things is is like you know statement affordable art that's been designer curated mm -hmm. you know and if we if we're getting if we have all these like legacy prints that got to our shop one way or another yeah. that maybe are not what i would curate anymore i think i have a responsibility if i'm trying to create an authentic product yeah to stay on top of that and make hard choices and even walk mm -hmm. away from some money yeah which is hard and that, i think that's the challenging part about being a creator in general because it, it's like you think about going to see a band and bands have massive catalogs of songs and albums. But when you go, a lot of times the audience just wants to hear the hits. The old hits. Shut yeah. up and play the hits. <laughs> Shut yeah. up and play the hits. <laughs> but as a creator, it's like you want to be doing new material yeah. and trying new material. Yeah. And I think that's the diff one, maybe one of the differences between community and audience is like a lot of times the community of the diehard fans, they're there for the whole ride. Yeah. They want the whole thing. Yeah. It's true. Even when they're trying to, they want to hear the deep cuts and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Whereas the audience sometimes just wants to hear. Want to be a fan. And the hits. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get That's that really little, cool. like, little bit of benefit. Yeah. Like yeah. Lowest, you know, lowest cost hit of dopamine. Or yeah. Yes. However yeah. you want to. 
Yeah, but I, you know, I yeah. think I think it also it takes it takes community and it takes an audience. Oh, for oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's not. Yeah, you kind of have to play the hits. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, for sure. Yeah, you do play because yeah. yeah. it's as as part of the community. Like you still want to hear those hits. Totally. Yeah. yeah. And like that's right. Yeah. Like you were saying, like there's things that you're an audience member of or a fan yeah. of, and there's a thing you know, like personally, that's how. Like there's things that I love that I'm just like. Yeah. passive like, totally yeah I, I support the brand or the yeah. whatever it is and love it but then there's things that like very passionate Paying about close attention to where it's like yeah. okay i'm gonna dive in i'm gonna engage you know yes I'm gonna, like support when they ask me to be a and, part of this yeah yep. for know? sure yeah. yeah and so i think it's it's very different but i think that a lot of people confuse the two and think they're one and the same yeah and like oh well i have this many followers it's uh -huh. like it that doesn't necessarily doesn't mean, mean anything community. really. Yeah. You know, it doesn't yeah. mean that like there's value there that, that like someone with a larger following than you starting the same business, right? Uh, doesn't means nothing as far as like their success trajectory or, mm -hmm. or whatever, because you've curated so much around community and value and like whether you recognize it or not, the DIY and the like, the, the way you have shown people, you know, you've peeled this curtain back. That's where I think community and value go so much hand in hand. I totally agree. And I think, I think if you're, if you think that you're building a community with content that's look at me content, mm. you're, you're building an audience building and it's an probably audience. half of them are going to be hate watchers. Oh, for sure. At least half. <laughs> yeah. But if you're building a, 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 an, a community to serve, mm. if you're coming at it every single day, is the point, is the takeaway totally. from this, I'm such a bad A, or the takeaway, here's a tip for you that can yep. bless your life, you yeah. know, like that, that's that literal, it, and it actually yeah. weirdly can be the same content, oh, but totally. it's all about the angle and all about where your heart is in it. And then, and then if you're always serving people, those are the people that are like diehard that like, Yep. She is launching a business and I am freaking showing up for her yeah. or it's her sale and I'm doing this because she doesn't know me, but I know yeah. her and I care about, you know, I, I care about her. I want to pay her back a little bit. Yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah. I think intent is such a critical component that often gets overlooked. People judge or they, you know, or like, oh, you yeah. know, whether you're making mistakes or say something or do things, especially with cancel culture and things like yeah. There are plenty of things that need to be yes. canceled and thought, addressed. Yeah, and, for sure. For sure. And but like I think when you when your intent is pure or right or or in line with value to your audience, I think that's where you can really start a seedling. And and if you know you're an influencer or a brand or someone who has a large audience, but you don't feel like you've Provide a community. You even talking about the challenge of how do we create community around Juniper? Yeah. How do you take the really strong community? I'd imagine and feel that you have with the Jenny Comenda brand, and not necessarily migrate all those people, but but create something similar that doesn't have to be the same actions yeah. that you take in the Jenny Comenda brand. Good. Yeah. But things mm -hmm. that bring value, and I yeah. think to me an area where is really interesting is like the independent artist mm -hmm. uh, like platform yeah. that you are yeah. and and people I like I could I could probably if I had no other like needs in the world become a, like a documentary photographer or videographer and like film process like I love yes, process like I just love too. like how do these things get made and how like, but even more like the process and the creativity and the, and like, like there's just something like I've realized this about myself through music because I'm also very visual. So it just like all the things connect, but the bands that I listen to the most and have had like the longest time in my like, hits playlist mm -hmm. are bands that I have watched a film or documentary. So like Sigaros uh -huh. and their Haima 
DVD. Yeah. Uh, Radiohead with yeah. their like basement series, yes. LCD oh, sound yeah. system with their like final tour. Like the the like process of like seeing behind the curtain of how the music is made and like totally what is their process and how yeah. it's like a creative experience. It's like like now that music is so much more like tangible totally. to me. Yes. And so I think process is such a fascinating thing. And with you working with independent artists and like being a platform, not just, so I think community is value and also providing connection between audience members. Yeah. Because community is connection uh -huh. yep. in something that isn't just your product. Yeah. So people can connect and be like, oh, you have that print? I do too. Yeah. That, that's that's great. Or, ha or have you ever, you know, what room? You know, I have that color in my yep. wall. Like, yeah. you know, which print should I pick? Yeah. But when they can connect because of that mm -hmm. and form relationships beyond, oh, you have that print? I like that print too. And if you can find a way to enable that, mm -hmm. that's where you can really expand on community. Yeah. And really like, when you are a platform for human interaction and connection outside of the direct product yeah. you sell, and, and your product is so much about storytelling. There's storytelling in art. There's storytelling in like where people are putting it in their home and mm -hmm. how that is. And there's you know these stories of the process of these independent artists. Your process mm -hmm. that I think within there as I guess a tip or advice or, or something to maybe explore or lean into is like building community around that process and the curation of that process I love and like that so what much. Yeah. like what makes this art great and yeah. get feedback from the community in that yeah. process because then people feel a part of the process yeah. yeah but also have the ability to like connect emotionally with, with and these. share their story yeah like where is this in your home? And getting back to like space, and I think that's a great transition to talking about space, is like, you know, where is this in your home? And what does it mean to you? And like, what does that space provide for your life? And uh -huh. how does the art that we sell, because then it's, you're moving beyond we sell a product to fill a need. It's like, oh, I want to buy art. Yeah. Oh, I bought a piece of art. Yeah. Hung it up. It's like, yeah, but how did that change you know the piece that you bought and put in your home how did that change the mood yeah. of your kids yeah. in that space yeah. yeah like of you and your kid like there's so many ripples of your art being placed in these significant uh -huh. spots in people's yeah. homes so so maybe let's talk about that yeah i think we've been i've been learning a lot about psychology weirdly mm -hmm. randomly yeah. um i think that we're just such predictable animals, right? Mm -hmm. Like our brains work in predictable ways. Yeah. Like we, the process stuff, that's a, not that I, there's never a re, like, we're not like tricking people to buy our product. No, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it's not as like devious as it sounds or whatever, but just as we, you know, are trying to understand how to produce content, that's not a waste of, yeah, yeah, of time people's and, feed. Yes. Like I don't want to waste their time truly yeah, yeah, totally. and my time or money, you know, obviously, but like, I don't want to spend a bunch of, effort making a reel that like people just sort of like feel like it's like an ad what's but kind this, of yeah what yeah right like good for you that you have yeah. the, you know i don't care you know what's what's what does that matter for me you mm -hmm. know but um just we we really do need those connections those personal connections and i think that's why we got into like the vulnerability trap mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. with social which yeah. i don't think is a successful way to um connect with a community um I think mm. that it's actually quite dangerous to. Um, what do you mean by that? Like the vulnerability yeah, I think, trap? Yeah, I think that for a long time people felt like they needed to be really vulnerable on social media in oh, order to yeah, have yeah. like a real community. Oh, yeah. um, and and I think that what we really need is 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 like yes, I think I think sharing yourself. Yeah. Is good and authenticity is good, but I think that we got a lot of manufactured vulnerability. Yes. Like we got into this like dangerous yeah. territory where it was like vulnerability for vulnerability's sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, That's... and and to like sort of like hotwire these connections, mm -hmm. um, and that really it's like only... almost exploiting your own emotions, which is. It's, or it is it's exploiting so your own dangerous. emotions. It's very it's, dangerous. It's, yeah. it's dangerous for your team. 
It's dangerous mm. for your family. It's yeah. dangerous for your mental health. Like I don't like 10 for 10 people yeah. that I know that like continued down that path have like, there's like major repercussions yeah, yeah. to their oh, business yeah. and their personal lives. Yeah. Totally. And you have to because have then you have to privacy. do that. Yeah. Well, think about it. like our private product. thoughts and our <laughs> private experiences are not yeah. meant for the masses. There's no, no way yeah. that every single person no. is paying close enough attention. And there's no way you can even convey yeah. all the reasons you're doing what you're doing or why you're feeling what you're feeling. Like totally. it's just not meant for prime time. Yeah. You know, I think there's some sort of study that came out that we're really we're really built evolutionarily we're only built to know intimately know and connect with max 200 people like mm. we just can't yeah. hold more space in our brain empathy mm. space totally. in our brain for that like so there are some challenges yeah. to to like opening up in a really really private mm -hmm. way people yeah. don't need to know my personal business no. but they can but they can know you this. can still be vulnerable i can be open and, and authentic these yes. things are hard and, they, and i you think know. i love that you brought up the process stuff mm. because that feels vulnerable yeah because you're showing the recipe, yeah, right? Totally. You're showing yeah. your, your, you know, at, like we get asked a lot about like mm -hmm. how things work. And I love, sharing, I hope somebody copies our business model and, totally. and like, that's fine. There's plenty of There's, room for all of it. Like we yeah, don't, you know, it's all good. Yeah. Um, but I think that, you know, I love the idea of process, especially for mm. art. I think mm -hmm. that that, oh, like, yeah. that provides like such beautiful immediate connection. One of my, my big roles now I paint, you know, we, we release in collections mm -hmm. and we release like 50, prints all at once and then we'll kind of roll out some of our artists collections mm. or pieces like we'll do like 20 of those yeah. in, in between each of the big collections or whatever but um like half of the ones that we release are ones that i go and buy like old paintings mm. or vintage stuff so i'll go to like flea markets when we were in europe we did a lot of like uh, uh, buying there we like filled up like four suitcases mm. worth of paintings it was really fun mm -hmm. and came home and we have you know this whole process for for scanning and editing and and test printing and rounds mm -hmm. and, rounds and rounds and rounds or whatever and when i got home we i shot we shot a lot while we were there mm -hmm. of just this kind of behind the scenes of me meeting with these like dealers and, yeah, and yeah. artists and people in you know this really cool shop in amsterdam or this huge cool. flea market in vienna or whatever and it's it's fun yeah. because because it was fun. It was totally. it's my, it's one of the f oh, yeah. best parts of my job, yeah, you know, is going and finding these things. Amazing. I love doing it. And I think maybe even some voiceovers mm -hmm. talking yeah, yeah. about like totally. why I chose what I chose yeah. or whatever really just adds that connection. Not I'm getting long winded, but no, I no. wanted to tell you about this one little story. My sister-in-law texted me and she's like, I just have to tell you. I bought a Cannon Beach. We had released an artist photo of, of Cannon Beach in Oregon. This was a couple of months I ago or whatever. I know it's beautiful. Yeah. She's like, I've never been to Oregon once in my life, but you guys <laughs> posted, a, I guess we put up a story box of mm. like, what, you know, tell us some of your favorite memories at Cannon Beach or whatever. Uh, and then we screenshotted some of the responses and shared yeah. them on stories or whatever. And someone had said something about being proposed to for her, whatever. But in my sister-in-law really connected with whatever connect, yeah. you know, story there was totally. there. She's like, I've literally, this place means nothing to me. I've never been there. Yeah. But I, every time I walk in my living room, I think about that sweet couple yes. and how they came together you know and it yeah. just totally. gives me feels yeah and it's like that's what that's what it's about yeah. that is like that's... the special beauty of social media yes. you know is that yeah. is that we can tell stories like that yeah and that's why i think i love process is because you give meaning like art can and absolutely should and does like with no context make an impact mm -hmm. and should and, and like that's the point is like you don't have to see the process to really connect with art that, yeah. that inspires you. But it helps. But it helps. <laughs> it does, like yeah. I think there's just something yeah. where, which is interesting because I think it's different from like filmmaking I think does, but almost like demystifies huh. that medium yeah. in some way. Sometimes yeah. like, yeah. oh, that was shot on a green screen and this. and I like, totally agree. Yeah. And, and so, but yeah. like, seeing someone like get their hands dirty and, and paint or sculpt or mm -hmm. or even just like think about and iterate yeah. on that thought and test and try like and then this is what they you know this is what they ended up with and it expresses you know this meaning or this story or this whatever i think that's where our such a like important part of culture and why it's been so yeah. is because like we can attach emotions to it we can attach stories to it we can yeah. pass it down and it yeah. can carry these like you know meaning and we can 
put meaning. Like your sister-in-law has now like put meaning to this yeah. print that she, yeah. she otherwise wouldn't have a connection to. And, yeah. and I think that's like a very interesting way to think about what you're doing and uh -huh. how you're curating this, like these stories for people and like giving them that psychological connection yeah. I think yeah. is really, really important. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go full nerd here. I, I love Star Wars and I wasn't very enthusiastic about like the sequel films. Uh -huh. I think um, you're a good company there. <laughs> <laughs> but talking about process, I love to watch behind the scene. And so I watched a documentary on how film eight was made and film nine was made. And it totally changed my appreciation for the films oh. because it's like nice. yeah. you get to see what people put into it mm -hmm. and totally. how they were invested in it. And it's like, oh, I can appreciate these a lot more now, yeah. even though if I'm not a huge fan of the end yeah. product, yeah. but I can appreciate it more. Yeah. And so that's what's like important about brand storytelling yeah. is being able to communicate those things to your your community and your because that's what gets people invested in what you're yeah. doing but totally. the tricky thing is is that it's like that's as much work as oh, producing yeah. and oh, delivering yeah. the product yeah you know it, yeah. i think that's the struggle that everyone's going through right now is like what's that the tiktok that's like everything is content everything is content you know that it's uh, just yeah. like they're just doing their job but it's like if totally. you're not like filming it and sharing it and editing yeah. it and producing it and responding to comments and doing all the things like it's it's, yeah, it's it's rough it's really yeah. really rough so i think i think being really clear mm -hmm. on what content people want to see yes and what they're going to engage with and what's moving the needle mm -hmm. as far as actually getting them to the site yeah you know and getting those cart values up you know mm -hmm. like that it, it just like it ha it has to make number sense too you know so yep. i think and, it, it and can be a little bit i i agree daunting. and at the same time disagree mm. i think challenging yourself to because at the end of the day you have to your business has to grow you, you can't do things that are for a sustainable amount of time that are just mm -hmm. like tossing things to the wind but i also think brand is about doing those things there's not necessarily that direct roi to there's things where you are uh creating value or or doing things that don't necessarily translate today I, uh, listen to this For guy sure. talk about like if you can if you can uh put something out in the world and wait a month to ask for something in return you, you can be successful if you can wait a year mm -hmm. for that ask you can be very successful you can wait 10 years for that ask you can be extraordinarily mm -hmm. successful and, and the idea is like brand yeah it's like when you can really get in the mindset of i'm doing this so that 10 years from now the juniper brand is mm -hmm. the brand yeah, for yeah, yeah. art in the home mm -hmm. or and so i think finding and i i i guess an invitation is like what are things that you can and, and it's not like you need to go do all those things you're saying like document everything and produce a bunch of content and just put, but like where are ways when you can kind of like throw the numbers to the wind, take the data, mm -hmm. use the feedback, yeah. listen to your community and be be authentic and true to like what's going to actually build brand. For sure. But uh, really, you know, the success of Apple or Nike or, you know, mega brands is because of the equal investment they've placed in culture. I love that. Totally. And finding a way for Juniper Print Shop to show up in the culture of the home mm -hmm. and to be, because like, like I don't, and I, I'm not in this world enough, so I don't know other than like Ikea or, or a Wayfair, like a home goods mm -hmm. brand that, that really clicks, but like who is the print brand and i know there's a couple you know different and, and honestly maybe it's etsy or maybe it's whatever but yeah, like etsy sells a lot minted yeah there's a, there's like those yeah. those platforms and i think just thinking about like where do you provide value and where can the brand be a contributor to the space and i think 
it's telling those stories and and testing things for sure but finding ways where you can take 10 or 20 percent of your focus and 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 say this is something that if it impacts a business it's going to be 10 years down the road but it's going to have a 100x yeah. return almost yeah, you know yeah, it's like yeah. this is going to be something that really cements us as like this type of brand so who do you guys think is killing it and doing that that way it's it's been interesting for us mm -hmm. to sort of like try to find um you know sort of like people in our competitor space yeah. that are that are trying to do more of what we're mm -hmm. doing but we're kind of in this like weird in between where we're not quite mom and pop levels yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. like we have to be operating a little yep. higher than that you know but totally. but we're not we you know we don't have you know, five rounds of yes. a series of, of, of totally like fundraising yeah. Yeah, for, mm -hmm. that Minted has, you know. Mm -hmm. So so it's like we're, we're in that in-between and it's kind of hard to know like. But I think that gives you an opportunity. I think so too. I think so too. And <clears throat> and that's what and that's what we're trying to figure out like mm -hmm. content wise or whatever. Do you guys know of any companies, not necessarily even in the home space, but like that have just like <sighs> nailed that like that like that content strategy? So one brand that I I'm obsessed with and this is like mega brand and then I'll try to think of one that's more on on par but Red Bull really Red Bull has created the only product they sell is beverages mm -hmm. they could they could double their business overnight if they sold merch and they won't hmm. because they're a beverage company but the way they've built brand through content they have red bull tv an entire platform about adventure and 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 the lifestyle of mountain biking yeah all and then random the sports stuff. and uh -huh. different things so yeah. they do sponsorships yeah. their marketing is sponsorships and these large scale events but they also produce the the level and an aesthetic and thought that they put into the content that they create if the nba did the same like i don't know why nba tv that brand exists, but why a similar, because there's a constant live stream and hours and hours and hours and hours of content that you can go on Red Bull TV and consume for free huh. that tells the stories and the process of these like athletes, what they're like, how they became professional and huh. so skilled at what they do. So just the way that they've, they think so long, like the long-term impact of that is just like, we are gonna be the culture of adventure sports and and these, these even random sports and i think nba could and doesn't but tell so many more unique stories about yeah. the backgrounds of the players that they try to just like have the one mm -hmm. michael jordan yeah, LeBron yeah, yeah. and just right. like focus all their energy on that uh -huh. but i think a, a brand so i think why red bull is and it's it's funny because it's just a brand that like when I see, I just feel, and it's like they charge three times as much as any energy, other energy drink, mm. but they put out so much value in what they like believe and stand for. And they curate this, this entire, like they are like a cultural in that space, like a cultural, like juggernaut mm -hmm. uh, in that and driving that space forward. Um, I think a smaller or like similar size to Juniper. Um, let me think. It's sort of tricky to, to, to figure. I think we are in this, like, you know, this sort of shift mm -hmm. of, of like what's happening Growth. in mm -hmm. in content. You know, mm -hmm. I think yeah. we're moving away from that, like, vulnerability stuff and also attention spans and TikTok, da, 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 yeah. you know, like all the things like, I, I think we're like, kind of like, well, burnout a little bit, you totally. know, and also kind of like a little bit of cynicism about, about why people post, mm -hmm. yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and so I think you're right. That just means there's an opportunity. Yeah. yeah. Right. And and I, especially and I, in I'm the home space. To, yeah, oh, totally. Like, yes. Because you've had these publications for mm -hmm. so long yeah and that's kind of a dying art form totally. right yeah you have brands but when i think of like home good like 
why is Wayfair, like Wayfair shouldn't be the first thing that comes to mind when I think of home goods. For but sure. it's the easiest, right? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like to you, it's probably very why did different. You, why did Wayfair come to your mind? Just because it's like they have a range of product uh -huh. and like a price point, a varying price points. They're going to have something. They're going to have something, yeah, uh -huh. right? I hate. There's nothing more that I hate in the world than shopping for furniture <laughs> because <laughs> I want, I know what I want yeah. and it, the time it takes to, to find, find that uh -huh. and it not be a million dollars or I just need to change my taste. But like, <laughs> but there's also like, down, man. there's also, I actually use your site often because you've curated uh, like best finds on various uh -huh. platforms. Uh -huh. And it's like, so I know that great products exist. It's just like, but then I also get frustrated it, yeah. on Wayfair because it's like, it's either not that great or they have too much of everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. so there is that like, I think opportunity in curation of home goods in a way that's like, uh, because I think that, people because of social and aesthetic you can pinterest and other things like you can know very clearly what you want but oftentimes it's hard to find i think that's the, so that was sort of the trap that we fell in is like do we do more art you know like mm -hmm. art.com is another great example they sell a lot of yes. art mm -hmm. and they have literally millions of prints totally. not millions of skews millions of prints yes. like yeah. millions so it would take it would take yeah weeks to get through their whole catalog yeah, yeah. you know um, and, and so I think, I think getting really clear mm -hmm. on what is your goal to have yes. something for everyone or is your goal to, to sell, you know, to, if your audience is yeah. 300, you know, like you could live off of, off totally. of 300 orders that month or whatever, you know, like it's yeah. like, I think well, it's and I just think that's out. the difference of like art.com is not brand. They're not building brand in they're any, not. In and any it, way. And, it, they're and it makes sense that they wouldn't have any sort of like real content no, yeah. on, they their, don't need on their to, socials. They don't right? need to. Because and Wayfair doesn't either. Yeah. No, yeah. because they are a, they are a marketplace. They're a, they're a tool. Yes. And it's they're not doing anything to build brand community, right? Yes. And community, yes. and I think like brands that are really, you know, focused on uh, delivering value and community, and and I think there's um, there's a lot of like outdoor brands that yeah. I think do a really good job because mm -hmm. they. They show the lifestyle, but then also do a lot of education on how yeah. to like get outdoors yes. and how to like experience the outdoors uh -huh. in, in various ways. And so uh -huh. they paint the picture, but then have the steps. And oh, by the way, our product can enable that. Yeah. I think brand is is very much thinking about where can you bring value to the ecosystem that your product serves. Mm -hmm. The home, the office, uh, you know people's day-to-day -day lives the, the walls mm -hmm. and the spaces that surround them how do you um bring value to that and i have lots of ideas of mm -hmm. yeah i think one of our like built, um just like low-hanging fruits this like this like this is just one of our huge benefits is that we get amazing ugc from our our community really i mean just yep. millions of dollars of what it would take millions of dollars for me to produce totally we get from our community and we yep. we have a my juniper hashtag where people you know there's more Amazing. than we could ever post yep. you know and really really beautiful things and if you go through the comments it's interesting i think at first glance it could be like a little disheartening because it's like what paint color is that where's that sofa from where's that you know mm. people have questions that are often not about maybe a third of the yeah. comments will be about the print but I love it because it's yes. this, it's it's the ten year sale kind yep. of like uh, it's totally. like just inspiring people for home space and then oh by the way you can get the art here yeah. you know exactly. I think is really and and it's and I am so grateful that we have such an amazing community that's mm -hmm. excited to share and feel pumped up when yep. they get chosen to be on the feed or whatever mm -hmm. like yeah. I think it's exciting for them um and 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 sort of like reinforces that community element but also is really helpful yeah. for us because then we don't we really don't do much for, totally. for that you know yeah. yeah and it's that curation of uh, of the pieces that are going to make up your home mm -hmm. and i think that's where you, you know you think about 
your prints and when when it's like oh i want you know uh whatever depend you know if it's ikea stage or west mm -hmm. elm or yeah you know the the brands that people you know that are different price points and different things but i think that the the cool thing is you can fit in both of those realms yeah. very well. And yeah, some of our like, highest engaged mm -hmm. content is this and with this, where mm -hmm. we match like rugs, like a rug collection oh, cool. mm -hmm. with like with prints or whatever. Yeah. And we could even get into collaborations if we totally. felt like we wanted to or yeah. whatever. But people love zooming mm -hmm. out. Like yeah. if you're just talking about your product over and over and yeah. over again, it sounds like a commercial. Yes. Yeah. And everyone gets really, really it can be as beautiful, but it's still gonna be it's still gonna be a commercial. Yeah. Right? yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it has to, has to be zoomed out. So for, I don't know how long, but the, for a long time, I've been like really, this, this is like concept of space has, I mean, this is a prime example. I have an office. It has uh, open space. Mm -hmm. We filled it with things that now enable us to shoot this podcast. And it seems like there's this part of this like, idea in my head that's like duh it's an office space that it's now a studio like but also like where this idea generated from was like my parents owned a bakery growing up mm -hmm. i already said we, we because that space was there and available at nights we started hosting and putting on local shows mm -hmm. and like did probably 30 to 50 shows over a decade or mm -hmm. so because that space was there it enabled us to create a community around local music and i've had musicians that played who've told me their favorite shows to play were at sweet cakes and like, i love it like mm -hmm. just awesome. things that i it was just like enabled through having a space and i think like space is something that is almost because it's a commodity and we need it to work in we need it to live in uh i think it's both overvalued and undervalued mm -hmm. and i there's this this like the enabling like what a space provides and it can be like okay i need a place to sleep or to work mm -hmm. and it can just be that right so so that's kind of like the baseline of what a space can be is like function. Mm -hmm. But when you get into like form and aesthetic and curation of your space mm -hmm. and what that enables or, and I think it's because I'm very visual and all of the yeah. aesthetic of a space really empowers mm -hmm. me to be more creative or yeah. to be more like uh, excited about mm -hmm. my work or, or whatever or at my house or, or things. Um, what, when you think about the word like space in that context, like what comes to mind for you? And is that something that you, I know in, you, in your, your in prep for this, you talked about space. And so that's why I wanted to bring it up. Like, how do you think about space and, and, and like what it enables? And then we'll, we'll also kind of connect it to Juniper. Yeah. I mean, I, I, this is going to be, I'm working on a home book right now, making a oh, book, cool. yeah, a writing book. And this is going to be a big part of it mm. just because I, I don't know if you've ever walked into a really beautiful like store or like a restaurant mm -hmm. or whatever, feel in oh. a certain way. And then you walk in and you're like, you feel like yes. a different person or yeah. you want to be more of this type of person totally. or whatever. Like it's like, yes, it's 100%. incredible. How, Your personality changes. Yeah, it literally <laughs> changes the way you talk, what you talk about. Yes. Like you're just like, I am. 100%. Yes, yeah, totally, yeah, yeah. totally. Oh yeah. When I'm in New York City, I'm a different person. I was you gonna know? say, like, the first time I went away. to New York, like my favorite part was just going into the restaurants and like, how yes. does their menu board, Yeah. like how does this business work? Not even from what they're selling, but just like, yeah the space yeah. Yeah. that they've created. And New York, yeah. just the, the energy there is just insane. It's but, insane. Yeah. It's totally insane. And there's a lot of thought put behind every one yeah. of those those spaces. And I think, you know, there's obviously, we put a lot into our, our we, we work in like a, um, we have like a big, uh, I can't remember what it's called now, but where it's like, it's like half yeah. 
like mixed use mixed warehouse. use that, that's what it is mm -hmm. yes yes so but you know some of it was like it used to be this big like helicopter training mm -hmm. facility and so there was just like oil stains everywhere in the carpet yeah. and it like smelled like dudes and like you know yeah. there's like <laughs> vending machines full of like spicy cheetos and yeah. like, you know, like Fli <laughs> flickering uh flickering lights, lights. exactly <laughs> yes it was it was like not a lovely place yeah and um, and we went in there and 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 spent quite a bit of time and money. It looks like a home now. Yeah. I and mean, every time somebody comes to visit, they're really impressed that at, in this like commercial yep. space that there's something that feels as homey and comfortable and welcoming, and it smells nice and it's clean mm. and it has good lighting and it has interesting colors and art everywhere and yeah. textures and layers and it has a feeling. And like that is it. that's the most important thing. When mm. I would meet with my clients, I would say. What's, first of all, what needs to happen here? Mm -hmm. What do we need to yes. do in this space? What's how do we how do we make it functional? That's really important. Yes. But how do you want to feel? Not mm -hmm. how do you want it to look, but how do you want to feel? Right? Or do you want to come up or do you want to come down? Do totally. you want to bring it in or do you want to feel big? Do you yes. want to you know? It's like it's like really like mm -hmm. cultivating. Yeah, do you want those, to like to embrace you or yeah. and like oh like comfort like you? bedrooms? Totally. You want them to be cozy yeah, yeah, yeah. and not bright and like. Yeah. You know, like you want them to be moody a little bit. Yes, yeah. totally. It's like, how do I want to feel in this space? Mm. And what am I trying to accomplish while I'm in this yeah. space or whatever? And I think that those are the only two things you need to focus on. I think in this Pinterest driven design world, it can be really overwhelming. Even Instagram, you know, you go on and you try to get inspired and there's just like, it's too much. Mm. It's too much to sift through. And you go through this weird like identity crisis about yeah. what do I even like? What's my style? Like, mm. you know, I'm just copying this famous person style or whatever and like it's such an intimate thing yeah and so i i really my whole mission is to like is just to educate but it, to empower people yeah. to like do weird things yeah, yeah, yeah get yeah. weird get really personal totally. like mm -hmm. don't we I get, so many things. homes are just like catalog homes now yeah like they could belong totally. to anyone and that's what There's i love no so much about art is touch. art is like the first totally. like the most personal thing yeah. that you can add to a space mm. it's like instantly like you said before it yeah. instantly changes the feel of a room and totally. and tells a story about who you are right mm. yeah. yeah yeah so it's like it's like suddenly it like turns on this like this like the closed captioning on a room you mm. know you're oh, like yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. like i know who this person is oh totally. have you been to cannon beach mm. like no i yeah. haven't but i saw this thing but on instagram let me tell you this story, yeah. <laughs> exactly <laughs> right right and i'm i'm a big like i've been a blogger forever yeah, yeah. I love stories. I mm. love stories. I love telling them. I love hearing yeah. them. I love sharing other people's like, like that is like the big connecting force in life for me. Totally. It's just like how we like meet each other. And I, I think art is an amazing storytelling mechanism. Mm. And, um, and then, and the space is so important. It's the context yeah. of it. Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I think it, I think it doesn't need to cost a lot of money. That's the other big, yeah. the other big differentiator. We always want things to be on the affordable side yeah. for Juniper. You know, that's really, really important for us for, for it to be accessible um, because I don't think that you have to be a millionaire to have a mm. really beautiful home, you know? And so that. it just takes a little bit of creativity, but I think it's worth yeah, the investment and, in the and time. And personalized, uh, uh, like when you were talking to something that came to mind is like personalize your space because I think you're right. Like it's so easy to get caught up on like what, and Maybe it's funny enough, because trends yeah. are trends and like yeah. everyone, you know, like goes we go through these trends totally and, and, yeah. and i think that's part of you just see things that like oh cool like you get inspired by them or, mm -hmm. or it's like or it's just what's available yeah you. right uh, so you can't it's really true. do yeah. much about that yeah, but, yeah yeah um and we're all a little bit trend blind we all we, oh, totally. a lot, we're like oh that's so classic or whatever and yeah. it's like oh like five years later like to. cringe yeah, yeah, totally. yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 that's okay it's gonna happen yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but i i think like there's just something that's why i think People work at coffee shops or like co-working space or or yeah. try to try to because there's like emotional needs that people are trying to satisfy so with true. the space that they're that's right you know if it's like I need connection yeah. I'm gonna go work it and it's funny because they probably put their headphones on and probably don't talk to anyone yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but it, you could talk to somebody but you could you if you really <laughs> wanted to you know opportunities right, the opportunity right, is right, there right. Uh, I think paying attention to some of those like discomfort feelings yeah. like what in a space if you're like in a living room and you're just like why what's not working mm -hmm. you know like why like and it's because you've not prioritized the thing that you're yeah. trying to like maximize so you're not getting the feeling that you want totally you know you can make anything the right color put the trends in or whatever like yeah. but if it doesn't feel good 
if it doesn't, mm. if it's not like giving you what you most need, like your like primary need yeah. for the space, like it's never going to feel right. You're always going to be desperate to change it. Mm. Conversely, your living room could stay the same for like it literally could totally. be if you invest in the right type of pieces yep. and it's really working and you're getting what you need out of it, you're, totally. you're never going to want to change then it. You're not. I have spaces in my house that I haven't changed in like five years, which is very, very rare for me yeah. <laughs> to not do, totally. but it's like, it works. I love yeah. it. I still love it. Yeah. You know? yeah I think there's, yeah, point where you can, when, when you're thinking about that versus like, I need to update this because yeah. the trends out the tr or the trend mm -hmm. or the, yeah. this or the, that, yeah. Yeah. um, what, was the ROI on the build out of your office? Mm, I did not measure that. I didn't care. Didn't matter to me. We didn't even really have a budget. I was like, I want to do what I want to do. Yep. And that it was a priority to me. Yeah. It mattered a lot to me. And that won't be the same for every business center, but no. it mattered a lot to me. And I think a lot of people thought I was dumb for doing it. I don't care. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Because it that... attracts a certain type of person though. I will say a certain type of, yep, of work is. of like people, Teammate. Yeah. yeah. And when you enter that space, you're reinforcing your core values and yeah. what you believe. Yeah. That space is important. Yeah. That, that the curation of art is important. Mm -hmm. And like, it's also great because it's probably easier to make content there. Yeah. So it enables, yeah. you yeah. know. Uh, but also like, like stepping into that fancy New York restaurant mm -hmm. when my employees walk in or when I walk in and there's fresh flowers out and everything smells nice, there's yeah. a candle going and it's just like, we've got a whole mood going. Totally. I become the person yeah. that I want to be. You yeah. Know? You can kind of step through that door yeah. and like, kind of like, yeah, be like, uh, embody not a different person, but a personality oh, yeah. or yeah, like a, uh, just a vibe that, yeah. that like, that you can more easily turn on, totally. I think, mm -hmm. because yes. the mood has been set, the space, the atmosphere, the environment it is can be enabling really inspiring and empowering that. Yeah. yeah, totally. And I think that if you could extract a little bit of how firm you were and saying, I didn't care. There was no budget. This is, I, we were doing it because that is what I know to be true. Mm -hmm. That's where you're going to find even more essence of how you build brand. Yeah. It's like those decisions that like throw all the marketing uh -huh. ROI, the like numbers, which are true. core, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but like, where are the things that you're just like, I know that yeah. this is, this is an empowering thing. Yeah. This is a, an itch that needs to be scratched. This is something that doesn't exist or, or yeah. even if it does, it's been being done wrong or yeah. like, this is what like, because going back to brand archetypes, a brand has a, a personality. Mm -hmm. How does your brand show up? What's the lens through which the brand sees the world? Mm -hmm. And if you can find three to five more things that get the brand as like enthused and like, certain mm -hmm. as you just were about <laughs> building out your office yeah. the, because that because what's cool about that too is that it's a niche that doesn't have to be a demographic or an aesthetic or a product niche mm -hmm. it's a niche of personality yeah. it's a niche of brand yeah. that like can allow you to have either multiple products or things that are empowered by that core value or core like story uh -huh. or thing that like makes the brand special uh -huh. and I think it's finding those like core and, and not that you don't already have a lot of those but no. just the ways to think about as you're thinking about building community as you're zero thinking about building those. brand it's yeah. like zero in on the things that really you get passionate about put on you know the the glasses that is the brand's yeah. view of the world and yeah. say, okay, if the brand were to walk outside right now, like what would make it excited and what would piss it off, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And like, like, cause in those moments, it's like those things that, that raise question. alarms one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. That's where you're going to find these unique, I because then that. you can position yeah. yourself in a place that isn't following trends. Yes. It's not, it's a heads down way of saying, this is my personality and this is how I'm going to show it. This is the yeah. brand's persona. This is our archetype. Yeah. And we're going to put these goggles on yeah. and the world's going to be, you Take know, yeah. bright blue uh -huh. and 
we're going to go find all the bright blue objects. Yeah, that, that right. Whatever, right? And so I think that's maybe uh, something to think about as you're I thinking about that. scaling brand and scaling community is like, because there's communities that are already forming around those hot topics. Yeah. And so if you can show up and provide value uh -huh. to those communities, not, hey, buy my print, yeah. but true value on these like hot topics or yes. points, um, I think there's like a really interesting, you know, way. And there's a whole conversation at a later point, but like there's this whole new digital art form and NFTs and, yeah. uh, you know, this, this realm that's like starting to uh, really empower artists in a way that hasn't been possible before yeah. in a way that also just like is bringing people back to valuing art in, in various ways mm -hmm. and like thinking about whether it's digital art or, or mm -hmm. physical art, there's this like renaissance happening of like the value of art and, and ownership of art. And, and, and so, um, I think there's, exciting times ahead for what you guys are building and how you're building. And I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I think that there's like this like challenge with the like sifting when you like, yeah. you like have too much to work with mm -hmm. and totally. then you're like, who are we? You know? Yeah. And then when you're, as your team gets bigger too, then they might have ideas about who we are, you know, which yes. is great. And you want everyone to feel like they have input and a voice mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But I think, you know, remaining true to that instinct, yeah. you know, it's like, get, like embodying that archetype yeah. saying, how would they But being flexible interact. and open still, yeah. you know, so that you can pivot and learn or whatever. Yeah. But because it you can know. still be you if yeah. the brand is you. But like, but it's also like I'd imagine you here in this seat versus you, Jenny, on social media, you're still embodying a persona. Mm -hmm. It's your it's you and mm -hmm. you're authentic and I'm and not even saying that in any sort of way it's just we even myself being on this podcast like you, you embody a persona of yourself yeah, right for to, sure. to enable conversation to mm -hmm. enable things i think similar with with the juniper brand is like how do you put yourself into that persona but also your team so it's like okay mm -hmm. let's get into the mind of our because then you can really think about it's less about what are the demographic targets and like thinking about psychographics and well, how mm. do people emotionally connect, connect. and think yeah, about yeah, yeah. us and like, yeah. you know, the stories of families that have put this art in their mm -hmm. home and what it's done for them and just, just various things. So um, final question is what role does kindness play in building your business and your brand? I think it plays a huge role, a huge role. I mean, it's one of our core values, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, putting people first, and yeah. I think that's an extension of that. Um, I I think that it's it's just been interesting to, I turned 40 this year, mm. you know, lived a little bit of life, guys. <laughs> so, um, so old, I'm like, <sighs> Just needed, yeah. Um, but I think that you know, the the longer I've been doing this, and the more the more you kind of like observe of the world around you, and just really see the people who have chosen to prioritize kindness yeah. and integrity, um, that the hard things can happen to them, and they'll still be able to like weather that storm. You know. Totally. Um, but I think that people who are really focused on their own gain and what's fair mm -hmm. and, you know, and what do I get out of this? What about me putting themselves first or whatever? You know, it might work out for them for short term, but it always comes back around. And um, and that's not a reason to not do it. It feels good to be kind. It feels totally. really good to be a kind and generous person. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I love nothing more than being able to say yes as a boss when somebody asks for a promotion or asks for, a, you know, asks for something that they need. Yeah. It's like, you know, and I don't always say yes. You have totally. to, you know, yeah. you have to you have to be wise about stuff, but like I I love like going to bed at night and feeling like mm. like I I was I was a kind person today, you totally. know. Like that's it's almost maybe the most important thing that we can do as business owners is just like the lives that we get to like directly affect both with our customers but like with our totally. teams. It's like you're doing really really good stuff in the world, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's it's something I'm fascinated by because I think 
in traditional maybe old school business it's like cutthroat and grind yeah. and like squeeze every last squeeze drop every last of drop out, yeah, of, yeah. out of your customers out of your employees yeah. like we gotta you know be yeah. rough and hard and like it doesn't work it doesn't work mm-hmm. and i think kindness similar to brand has this like long tail roi of like you know serving someone or being kind or just mm-hmm. smiling or engaging with someone like that could, you know, in a, in a very extreme scenario, save someone's life in, in a very, yeah. just like, you know, lighter scale, like just make someone's day and improve. Yeah. Like, and yeah. what does it take to be kind? Like, yeah. it's not yeah. a hard thing to like, I mean, there's times when, you know, patience and all, stress and all things where it's just like, okay. Yeah. But I think kindness being a strength and being, you know, bold with kindness is yeah. something that I'm really like passionate about. And yeah. like, I think seeing you build your business, I think is very much and, and really everyone we have had and are, are trying to have on this podcast, I think embodies that concept of like building with strength, but also with this like core of kindness and value wouldn't you go as far to say as to say that it's like a necessary thing for to build a company anymore you know i think that you can sense when when somebody when a company's values are off that way you know and and it and people are paying really close attention to that i think even some of the give back strategy it's non-negotiable anymore like if you don't have a give back strategy like you're going to get called out for it and it's mm. just doesn't, it feels icky, you know? Yeah. One, ex- one um, example of this was we like had this big sale planned, like a semi-annual mm-hmm. sale that was going to be huge. And we ended up turning it into the last kind of sort of last minute um, into a customer appreciation week mm. instead of like a, just a buy sale prints, for, yeah, you know, yeah. sell or whatever. And it was like all give back, celebrate, celebrate, give back, give Love back. That. And it was like, we blew the doors off. Like totally. we, we that, not that we did that to like no, flip it that way, but the benefit, like I just, yeah. I think it, it's, it's really a huge gratitude extension of that, is, like gratitude and abundance mindset. Yes. If you're in just in scarcity and you're like, this is like, the, you mm. know, penny pinching constantly. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's just, you're capping yourself and you're, you're really cutting your own legs off. Totally. Like, like it just, it's just not going to work for you. And, yeah. and with social but also with like, in, in my opinion, you know, over the next decade, brands that don't crack the community code are going to have a really challenging time. So the evolution yeah. of like just having a website to get by to then just yeah. having social media to get by. Now it's like you're going to have to have a community to get yeah. by. And you can't. That's interesting. Like yeah. be, you can't build community without kindness and without value Mm -hmm. and without this exchange of like, you know, being a good person. And, and, and so I think that will be interesting how that plays out, Mm -hmm. but I think community through kindness and through these like values Mm -hmm. is like the next evolution of where social media and like the transparency and authenticity and what people are actually connecting is going to be very much does this satisfy needs outside of the products that this brand sells? Yeah, couldn't agree more. Wow, that was that was great, unreal. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. sir. Seriously, it's been so fun. So much fun, and hopefully, I mean, it's valuable to me. So it's definitely yeah. gonna be valuable. I really appreciate it. A lot of people. It was so, awesome. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Thanks for tuning in. Bye.